Not that you're in trouble. <laughs> I just think that, you know, yesterday, I mean, yesterday or yeah, uh, Wednesday, you sounded horrible. So we gave you the uh, on-air day off. You were still here. Actually got probably more done than you've been in a long time. Definitely. Uh, and then today you're going to try to ease yourself back on. But, man, I mean, you know, some, none, a few hours, all the hours, just whatever, okay? No problem. I, uh, I did some maintenance. Maintenance? <laughs> I drank some hot tea. Uh, the doctor took me off steroids, so I decided to take some last night and this morning. So. Oh, you did? Yeah. You call Hootie up and get some? <laughs> no, I've got some in my cabinet. <laughs> Spice. Hootie, you need some steroids, buddy. Oh, I got him. <laughs> Spice. Yo. I've never gotten so many emails from some sick bastards out there that are so excited about the possible best banana boobs contest. I know, dude. I, Seriously. I, I... There's something about banana boobs. There is. So can you really, uh, you know, can you move that right along if you could, please, for me? Yeah, I'm going to have to speak to somebody in, in yeah. some power. Well, if you could start, if you get that ball rolling, okay? <laughs> okay. Get it sponsored, like a $500 or $1,000 best bo- best banana boobs. Okay. Ned, are you a banana boob fan? No, I like uh, hangers. Oh, you like the hangers? I like the hangers. <laughs> well, this girl yesterday from 2001 when we were doing the topless we. She had this just, the, the, you know, I wouldn't say the best set of banana boobs I've seen in a while, but she definitely had banana boobs, and they yeah. were, and, and that just really gets my eye. That, 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 that natural kind of, you know, slinging banana boob deal just gets me zipped up. And so anyway, I said, Spice, we should do the best banana boobs. And so. Phone lines blew up over Phone lines deal. blowed up. Emails blowed up. Damn. Uh, hard out today, fellas. So I am going to haul ass because uh, you know yesterday I think we uh, we we pretty much uh, were on time, and uh, so I'm going to haul ass today early to get a couple out of the way. Uh, oh, Brent, you know I asked, uh, can I get some vitamin water out of the oh yeah out of the Miller Lite cooler? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is there some down there? I think there is. God, I think. In fact, I I got to get a hold of Tom the Tree Man. Uh, he's like, uh, if you notice that spice, kind of his new one of his jobs is to be like the manager of the gym. I see him like running. He's like a runner. He runs stuff over there and packs it well, in there, cleans now, equipment, comes yes. back, does it again. If you guys notice, man, that gym is cleaner than it's ever been. He's on they, point. Oh, man. we I know we're out of uh, essential vitamin water over at the Clem Gym, but we have some here, and I know that my Miller Lite machine's full. But, uh, uh, oh, nothing's better than it. Mm. And this actually got little ice. It's on the verge of being so cold that it's got little chunks of ice in it. I love vitamin water. Mm. I love the essential deal. <clears throat> Manson, your kids like vitamin water? Uh, no, my kids are, you know, they drink straight soda. Oh. They're, they're fiends. <laughs> straight Pepsi Coke. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I mean, have you Bouncing done- off the walls. <laughs> Hyper as hell. It's Hard going core. crazy. Hardcore. Heard Trace has turned into a rapper. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> heard, heard you got a little bit of an urban situation there in the household. Yeah, Marshall Waters. <laughs> <laughs> You got a 16, 17-year-old thinks he's 50 cent. Uh, anyway, man, vit- oh, God, I love vitamin water. Anyway, let, let Tom the Tree Man, our letter, our letter vitamin water guy, know that we're a little bit low, we're a little bit low on essential with the orange stuff that I just absolutely love. Uh, also, uh, don't forget Bubba Raw this afternoon. This afternoon, uh, I don't know, by probably noon or so, we'll have the, uh, the clips, the three clips of the topless We Olympics uh, from the girls of 2001. That was awesome. Uh, meet Spice tomorrow from noon to two, and Spice actually it's confirmed I'm gonna be there. Excellent, man. Just Looking to swing to it. Just to swing on by. Yeah. Just to say hi. I'm a, if it's not right now, I'm gonna bring my bubba my bubba my bubba glide. Cool. Uh, Jim's Harley, uh, noon to two, uh, Saint Petersburg Saturday. That's this Saturday noon to two, uh, Saint Petersburg. Jim's Harley, fifty fourth and, and two. And, well, actually, it's fifty fourth Avenue North and twenty eighth Street North, uh, noon to two. Now is it is this that benefit deal? No, no, no. That was last weekend. It went really well. It was it was a good time and it was a good cause. So, uh, no, tomorrow's their big open house sale. And oh, then, okay. The next weekend, God, I think it's next weekend. I'm up in Jacksonville. Now, do you take your do you take your Jixer to gyms? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, going to. That's how you roll. Yeah, it don't matter. You know the best thing about Greeny down there at gyms is you know uh, when uh, when I went down there and got my Bubba Glide. I think Spice went down there to talk about his course, and he didn't. You know, most motorcycle guys hate on. Like the Harley guys will hate on the rice burners, and the rice burners will hate on the Harley guys. But Jim's is like, man, you know, no, j- those uh, those Jixers that uh, are nice bikes. Um, well, they sell the Buells down there, which yeah. uh, the Buells are nice. They got we have a we got Buells down here, and then and then uh, Spice talked about this dealership up in Jacksonville. What was it? North uh, Jacks Motorsports. 
And uh, I talked about Adirac. I think Adirac. It was Adirac. Adirac. Uh, Adirac. Uh, yeah. Adirac Harley. I yeah. Think. Adir- Adam, I was, Adamac. Adam, Adamac. Adamac. Yeah. I was talking about Adamac Harley with uh, with Greeny from Jim's. He's like, man, Adamac's a great dealer up in Jacksonville. And then uh, we talked about the the place that gives Spice his motorcycle. And Greeny was like, great people. Yeah. Yeah. So Greeny didn't like hate on people just because you're not buying a Harley. I don't understand the feud. Maybe maybe you can show some insight on this. What's the feud between Harley guys and uh, sport bike guys? I don't get well, it. Well, I mean, you know, the Harley guys are tend to, you know, they're a little bit older, a little more responsible, and it's American made, and it's you know, kind of that kind of deal. And then you know, the rice burners are you know, J- Jap made, and you know, so that's the whole deal. Well, <laughs> it, it tends to be punk like. You know, it's you know, it's a difference between you and I. You drive a rice burner, you're a little punk. Got How pe- am I? Got, yeah, am I? Pe- your, your penis pierced. <laughs> got jewelry in your lip. All that sort of deal, you know. And I'm look at me. I'm you know cool and rugged, and I drive a Harley. Gray hair. There you have it. Make more money than you. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> Guy makes you know 125 thousand dollars. He's gonna probably be driving a Jixer. Guy makes a couple million. He's gonna probably be driving a Harley and a Daewoo. It didn't, that doesn't quite make sense no, now, does it? No, it doesn't. Not at all. That doesn't quite make sense at you're all. Living in, you're living in a nice neighborhood. You've got a huge mansion. Let's be honest. It's a mansion. Uh, you've got all these great toys, and then you drive a Daewoo. And not only do I have one, but I got two. But two Daewoo. And I know I have a I have a Daewoo ready to go when my other Daewoo breaks, but my, my Daewoo's will never break because Craig spends like two or three days a week, Brent, down at Miles Automotive with Todd and Mike. And Bobby and Miles down there on ninth, and like as a matter of fact, my other Daewoo, my my uh, four door sedan Daewoo, <laughs> gets back today uh, from Miles. All new timing belt, uh, all new plugs, plug wires. So it's like a constant <laughs> rotation. One Daewoo goes in, another one comes out, and then one goes back to the shop, actually, and one a, comes out. Actually, I had a uh, I had a, a blown head gasket, and it was oh no, I, yeah, either a valve cover gasket or a head gasket. Yeah, it was a valve cover gasket. I was leaking oil and it was fouling out the first two plugs. <laughs> so it's, it runs like a tip. It rub, runs like a top now. So it doesn't make sense, yeah, Spice. I mean, you know, where, look where I live and look at the various other things I have. And then I drive, a, you know, literally a $900 four-door Daewoo to, to work and like it. Keeps you humble. <laughs> I like it. <clears throat> My neighbors look at me and just shake their head. <laughs> and I'm happy. You Bringing know, down property values. <laughs> I got AM, FM, buddy. I'm straight. Did you guys see the? Uh, did you guys see the the race just absolutely blow it last night? Yeah. Oh my god! And I and I'll tell you right now, I I think J- uh, Joe Madden is a genius. I love the guy. There is not a show on this. There is not a more highly rated program in Tampa, Florida, that loves and supports the Rays more than we do. Period. I love those guys. Love everybody uh, that works over there. I love every player. I love every coach. I don't have a bad word to say about anybody at the Rays, but I think that Madden blew it last night, Brent. And here's my premise. We got a two-run lead going into the seventh. Uh, We bring in Price because I think Shields is starting to get dinged up a little bit, pitch count getting up there. But, you know, he's held the lead going into the seventh. We uh, We bring in Price. Now, the good thing about Price is this kid that they just brought up from Durham, who was a number one draft pick two years ago, the good thing about him is the league has not seen him a lot. They, there's not a lot of data on him. That's a that's a Joe Madden-like social trick from and 2002 it, when they brought K-Rod up in it, September. Exactly, and then smoked through the playoffs, and K-Rod ended up being the next the next big thing. In fact, now just uh, doesn't he lead, didn't he just set the record on saves? Oh, yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> well... Maybe, maybe I'm I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Maybe uh, Madden doesn't want him to pitch a lot for the playoffs, so they but, don't get a film on him. Yeah, that's what that's. Well, what anyway, I mean, we, you know, we had two run lead, and we we need we needed this game last night. We really did. We we really needed this game. We had a two run lead going in the seventh. They bring in David Price, this new this phenomenon, this rookie uh, out of Durham who just breaks out. Oh my God, what a good kid, man! What a great draft pick. <laughs> so Lord. he comes in one, two, three. Buckle my shoe. Nobody's getting in, nothing. I'm out of here. Boom. No runs. I, I think. Maybe, I thought he led in two runs. No, I don't think Price led in two runs. Did he? I don't. There was a ground ball single. Well, that was Price on the hook for that one. Or no, I thought that was Shields' deal. Yeah, I thought I thought Shields was on the hook for that one. Well, they was they were Shields runners, but I mean, yeah, he that, let, yeah, yeah, he let him in. Yeah, th- those, but those are on Shields tab. Those yeah. aren't on Price's tab. No, no runners that Price put on base made it in on the plate. All right, he didn't get any runs on his tab. Anyway, make a long story short. Uh, I, mean, you, I, you're, I guess you're right. I mean, I said I think he did allow two, but we're up by two. Then he brings in Percival in the eighth. Now I do realize that Percival's in a rehab situation, 
And he's 40. And he's 40. But I mean, they think, so they, and, and he goes one, two, three. He allows nothing. And he, and he's, and he, and, and even the commentator is like, man, the guy uh, is looking like, you know, he did earlier this year, obviously his back that he had epidural, he had an epidural procedure done. He's got a better follow through. His stuff looks better. Doesn't look as tight. And he does, you know, one, I think he allowed one, either one walk or one hit, but nobody scored. So they're all boom. So we're still, we're up by two going to the ninth. Then we bring in uh, Matzo Ball Wheeler. <clears throat> <laughs> and he just hangs this stuff, and they score five in the ninth. Now, my my question is, shouldn't we have thrown Percival in on the seventh? Because they said the commentators on TV said they didn't want Percival in the ninth, just because it was an it was an unknown as to how well he's going to do, and it was a rehab. So let's bring in Percival in the seventh. Then then let's bring in Price, and let him stay in there until he messes up, and then let's bring in Balfour. Nobody gets nothing off of Balfour. Now I don't know. Period. Uh, from the night before, I don't know if Balfour was available. Last oh, night. he's available, man. He's he's a stud. Look at him, man. He's a he's a psycho. He talks to himself. <laughs> he, he deep breathes on the mound. Boy, he's he really him. talks to himself, doesn't he? Oh yeah, man. <laughs> hey, any guy that talks to himself can pitch every day of the week. I mean, look at look at for the <laughs> lightning back there. Remember Javi Bullen? Yeah. Javi Bullen used to be in the gold hitting box, just just going nuts on himself. Oh, talking to himself. Yeah. And Balfour, he pumps the ball. When yeah, he does the when whole he gets, thing. When he gets a strikeout. And the thing about Hobby Boone, is so, he was so rushing, you couldn't understand what he was saying. <laughs> he had this nervous twitch with his head. He'd keep you shaking know, it back and forth. I forgot to ask uh, uh, Lynn Barry yesterday. But you know what? Really, that, that's the one person that we let go that I think was probably made the biggest difference as to why the Lightning yeah. sucked. I, I agree with you. And on top of that, when they let him go... I think it was Jay Feaster came out and goes, "Oh, you know what? Hobby Boone was good, but he wasn't that great." Well, look at Jay to justify Fe- his move. Well, and, Jay Feaster's looking for a gig right now. Yeah, and it never made <laughs> sense to me at all. And, and the thing, the point you made yesterday, though, that was the most correct was in the third period, the Lightning blew yeah. a lot of games. Uh, that had to do with conditioning. Yeah. That's- well, anyway, uh, anyway, man, you know, I, Balfour can pitch. He's such a psycho, and he's such a stud. And he actually says he's told everybody that if I wasn't a pitcher, I'd be a tri- I'd be like an Iron Man triathlete. Yeah, who does that for fun? <laughs> yeah, just for shiz and Chris. Because I want because I want to get after it. <laughs> I mean, this guy can pitch every day of the week, man, until his arm falls off. He had, to have, he had to be in a chainsaw accident where his right arm or left arm, whatever he throws with, officially is a cut off his body. And, and before Balfour is not going to roll up in there and huck at 98. He's in the 97s now. Did you see that two nights ago? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's, he, he brings it. And, I mean, to me, I, I like Wheeler as a guy, and I've been out with him, and, and, and great guy. He doesn't got to nothing. Me, he just doesn't look like much of a closer. He doesn't got it. He doesn't got it. So anyway, man, I well, think... Well, you got to look at Perez missing Upton in center field, too. Perez missing that fly ball in yeah, center field hurt yeah. bad. Oh, when's Upton coming back? What's the? Is he day-to-day? Is he tweaked? Is he on a 15-day IR? What's going on? Let me get his... I'm not happy about last night. Yeah, that was that was not good. And the Twins, you got to remember, the Twins are trying to scrap it out with the White Sox, so they got yeah, I mean, they, they, they got they got more reason... Well, I mean, they're... I mean, they, they got... Yeah, they're, they're, they're in more dire straits than we are. Well, the, the Rays can clinch tonight. If we beat the Twins and the White Sox, Yankees, and Blue Jays all lose. Did Boston win last night? I believe they did. Let so, me see. Are, we with, are, we with, are they within a game? No, the, uh, the Boston was off last night. It's a game and a half. So we're a game and a half right now. It's one really, and a half. it's two and a half because supposedly the tiebreaker gives us a game in hand is what they call. Yep. And uh, let me tell uh, you. Manson, who would have ever thought, man, that we would be talking about pennant racing? Yeah, no way. Here in the double race. Let me tell you, as an as an Angel fan, the, 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 see Carl Crawford is uh, is on there, but I think he's day to day. Yeah, Upton's day to day. He's not even on the he's not even on, on the fifteen day DL. Upton. Boy. How about Crawford? Crawford, uh, it says he should have been he should have been it lists him as should have been back already. Did you hear Delman Young getting booed last night? Yeah, he's an X Ray. <laughs> Anyway, I, you know what? Here I'm getting full of myself. Let me uh, let me get up to speed. I I got I got hard out. I got to be out at fifty six nine fifty six today. You know, four in front of ten because of the other show fires up on Fridays, immediately at ten. So I and I have uh, Polly Shore coming in today at eight twenty. We'll probably run along with him. So let me get my first one out of the way. Same old routine, same old missed opportunities. Wow. The Bubba Radio Network returns after this. Make sure you subscribe to Bubba Army HQ. Otherwise, Bubba will have to take action. And there's a lot of power behind those short arms. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Now back to the BRN. Let's, uh, I didn't even plan on this. But like if, 
each individual person was to be a rock star, who would they be? I'll start with, if Ned was to be a rock star, is it painfully obvious? Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Nothing. Willie's nobody, cool. Willie's nobody, cool. Hold on now. Why has everything got to be confrontational? I don't know. Nobody's saying that Unless it's- you're getting in my face. No, I'm not getting in your face. Anybody that gets pulled over on the tour bus with mushrooms and weed on the tour bus is cool. Exactly. No, you're Willie Nelson. Well, thank you. I think Manson, I love Willie. Manson will probably be Rob Thomas, or I'm open to suggestions. <clears throat> but I think Rob Thomas for Matchbox 20. I'll take that. <laughs> I got nothing better. No, but I mean, you know, successful, good looking guy, rugged. Sings real, you know, cool ass, meaningful songs. Kind of on the chick side of the deal. <clears throat> Sp- who would Spice? Spice would probably be like uh, Fred Durst. Hey, what do you? What, what do you? Oh yeah, because he's a real rock star now. No, to me, the epitome of a rock star. I'll give you my. Okay, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. I think Spice would be like Kid Rock, kind of, kind of borderline white trash. That's my. That's are you my asking name. us who we wanted to be, or are you just telling us who you well, think we're going to be? First of all, you can't comment on who you were going to be. Everybody else can, though. Manson, I mean, you, you got anything on the top of your head for who Spice Boy would best, you know, resemble on rock star deal? Resemble or want to be? Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm trying to think. Well, either. Are you talking about personality or looks or uh, just the, the whole the whole shooting match? Here. I'd Obviously. like to be Nikki Six because that guy to me is the epitome of a rock star yeah. from A to Z. I think, He's I think. done everything a rock star can possibly do. All right, I'll I'll take it into consideration. He's Brent, a little any, old, Brent, but anybody yeah. uh, <laughs> anybody uh, you have in mind for Spice being a rock star? I would say that if you if you look at resemblance, and I think that that he could pull off Phil and Selmo. From Pantera. All right. Brutal. Dude, Phil and Somo's. No, oh. Nola's good. Uh, I mean. I was going to say Phil, Phil Collins. <laughs> <laughs> He's like almost deaf now, too. <laughs> He's giving away like nearly uh, hundreds of million dollars. Uh, yeah, literally to, to hundreds ex-wives. of millions. Now, now, Manson, you got anything? You got that, anything? Does, yeah, that is something I would do. You got anything for Manson? Me? I mean, Man, uh, Manson, you got anything got for nothing. Spice? For Spice? No. Who would he be? All right, now over to Brent. <laughs> Some somebody in a death metal band. Yeah, uh, somebody who I don't even know that those kind of I don't even know those kind of bands. Mastodon or Kill Switch Engage or Chimera. Midnight oh. Oil. Yeah, there you go. That's what, I mean, you could say make if a case Brent, out. That's how I look. If, but if, <laughs> if Brent was to uh, shave his beard and, and really really bald it down, uh, Midnight Oil. But uh, but the, the bads are burning. <laughs> <laughs> but the act I do is kind of more like Rollins. Yeah. Right, now, right, Ted Fred. How about me? Now, what would you guys say about me? Meatloaf. I got to be Meatloaf. I guess Don DeLuise. There's just no other option. So I'm Meatloaf. <laughs> I tell you what. I, I, so hold on. So hold on. We got Meatloaf. Don. I'm sorry. We got Meatloaf. So this super group. Midnight. <laughs> Midnight Oil. That's a real rock star. Fred Durst. Hey. <laughs> If I gotta be Midnight Oil, you gotta be Fred. Durst. No Will, way, man. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Willie Willie Nelson and the and, and Rob Thomas. That's who we got, my friend. That really is not that bad. At, well, maybe unless that'd be the worst and, single ever. Unless Spice is going to be Phil Collins. Uh, wait, what happened to Nikki Six? That's who you want to be. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to be Brian Johnson. Well, it's there you saying, go. It ain't going to work. <laughs> I tell you, I've actually spent some time with Meatloaf. He's a pretty cool dude. Yeah, plus like, he's way into sports. Plus, and man, and he's loaded. Oh, yeah. he is loaded. Did you guys have you guys seen the kind was. of money he's made? It's insane. Oh, oh God, God. I don't know why he's still doing anything. <laughs> I heard. I, I saw some some figure that he made. That he made in his pocket made nineteen and a half million dollars on the bat out of hell, the, the paradise for the dead. Yeah, nineteen oh, back in the day made nineteen and a half. Well, and which would be like forty million today. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. He made a ton on that VH1 Storytellers tour he did, and he wasn't that bad of an actor in Fight Club either. I got to give it to him. Oh, anyway. in Fight Club he was really good. <laughs> anyway, uh, today our monthly will probably be clear. I mean, we'll be out, we'll be off air, but at ten o'clock today our monthly report card comes. That'll be interesting, huh? Uh, let me get through the emails and uh, today, then I'm going to get another one out of the way, so we're going to be way ahead. By the way, t- uh, today, uh, Pauly Shore comes in at 820, and I, w- I was not going to have Pauly on, not because I have a problem with Pauly, because Pauly and I are friends for 10 years, but uh, I'm not real happy with the improv right now. Uh, set up some tickets uh, for a friend of mine to go. Actually, uh, the wife of a, of a uh, one of my buddies who races it out of East Bay wanted to, go to, wanted to go to the improv. I forget. What show was it, Spice? It was for, uh, what did I say, D.L. Hughley. Yeah. And uh, she goes with her girlfriend to go to get tickets. And uh, Spice set them up. And, of course, Improv doesn't know what she's talking about. And you're at the wrong show. And 
They said oh. they put him for the late show. Yeah, and she so came to the early show. I'm like, screw blah, you blah, then. Blah, screw blah. you, improv. How many years, Brent, have I been hooking up that Barney Rubble looking bitch? <laughs> many. Yeah. Well, you can tell Barney he can stay in the green room, Spice. Oh, I, I got, did. I did. I, I ain't got nothing for him. I, believe me, we had a long talk <laughs> about it. Uh, I work for this is some. Uh, I'll get through my emails this morning. I work for a game developer here in Tampa. We actually just finished a game called All Star Cheerleading Squad for the Wii, which would be a perfect topless. Segment. I like it already. Oh yeah, All Star Cheerleading Squad. <laughs> the game works uh, with the Wii Fit and the Wii and the Y and the Wii Remote and the Remote and the Wii Motes. Let me know and I'll be able to get you guys what you need. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, Brent, I'm going to hand this over to you. You can follow up on that. Sure. So Spice, we can have. You know, chicks uh, like uh, like where your head's at. <clears throat> you know, doing the cheerleading deal. Yeah, I uh, just moved uh, to Inglewood, Florida, because my mother isn't expected to make it much longer. I moved uh, down from the Cincinnati, Ohio area, where I actually used to listen to the Pop of the Love Sponge show on one hundred two seven WEBN, The Frog. When I moved down here and reprogrammed my radio station and heard that you were on the air, well, it made a very, very bad and sad situation a little bit more manageable. I just wanted to say thank you to you and your crew. By the way, I personally love the Wii Olympics. Thought it translated perfectly uh, over the air, especially when you were able to pipe in those uh, those sound effects. Josh. Thank you, Josh. <clears throat> uh, this is Susan. I got a job today, so there's no need for me to pick tomatoes topless hmm. at the farm. Tell Ned that I declined his job offer. Ha, ha, ha. So why did you refuse to talk? Why did you refuse to talk to me personally yesterday when my uh, then my daughter uh, phoned phoned in? saying that you actually replay the old interview of my of mine. Call me when you can so we can talk about my new job. Sincerely, Susan. Is she a, is she like a fine line obsessed or stalker with our show? <laughs> I think yeah, so. I thought we sucked. She didn't listen. She wanted anything to do with us. Yeah, no. we suck. Yeah. Uh, Steve Harvey's better. Uh, yippee yo. <laughs> White trash bitch. <laughs> One reason I'm not having you pick it up, Spice, is that she, in her email, says, call me. Yep. So. Otherwise, I'd have to get permi- permission. Oh. Susan? Yeah. It's Bubba. We're live on the air. You told me to call you. Shake out the, uh, shake out the, <laughs> the, Shake uh, out the, the, the crack. The crack, o- the, the, the crack hangover. Let's talk. You told me to call you. <laughs> she got you. Call me. Let me let me let me read this. Uh, let me read this verbatim. Call me so we can talk about my new job. Maybe uh, she thought she had the new job, and then they did a background check. <laughs> I mean, she emailed it while she was feeling so good and high on. <clears throat> now, don't be cussing. Hello? Hello. Uh, go to the other side of the trailer. You got bad reception, sweetie. <laughs> well, the cord reached that long. She's still got a cord phone. <laughs> Quite the wiry. You like, what'd you call her one time, Ned? <clears throat> Not R- one. Rangy. Rangy. <laughs> Quite the rangy gal. She's real rangy, is she not, Ned? Oh, yeah. I got a job, Bubba. Susan, hold on. Though. First of all, don't cuss like you did. Second of all, we lost cell service. I don't know what happened. Thirdly, uh, I'm trying. You t- lost you- what service? Your your phone dropped out. Like it's like you we didn't get. You're like you lost your signal. So I'm calling you back. Okay. Now let's start this over. You, you emailed me and told me to call you, correct? Yeah, 6 o'clock in the morning. That's a little early. What's that, honey? It's 6 o'clock in the morning. It's a little early. Well, it's almost 7, but yes, okay, fine. I'll, I'll give that to you. What's, okay. what's your new job, Susan? I'm a kind of waitress. You're a what? I'm sorry. I'm a waitress. A cocktail waitress? No. Just a regular waitress. Too old for that, I thought. Uh, Where? What, what kind of restaurant? Yeah, what kind of restaurant? This is a, uh, one that stays open 24 hours, but. A waffle like a house. waffle house. Yeah. It's like, a job, though, guys. Like I originally. What's your language, I'm, first I'm, of all? Uh, Susan, we're, we're glad you got a job. Susan, we're, we're happy for you, man. Seriously. Why do you think that, I mean, it's a start, and, it, you know, hey, it's, exactly. a, it's a job, and you're not going to be slinging crack rocks. So it's, it's, a, exactly. it's a win, win, win. 
Mm. And you know what? I mean, you know, Waffle House and other places like that, they, I mean, you know, as, as much as you think as I'm being a smart ass, I'm really not. I mean, if you would do well, you could move yourself up the ladder. There's nothing, I know. There's nothing wrong with working there. No, hell no. I love Waffle House. Mm. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't eat there and if I, you were and working and there. I, but. And I can tell you probably just based on. Just, I can probably tell you the Waffle House I think she's working at. <laughs> tell me. I, I'm thinking that she's. Hey, I didn't say it was a Waffle House, but go ahead. Brent, if I was to assume it was a Waffle House, I, I think it's a Waffle House, the Waffle House right there on 54th and 275 near the Lillman area. <laughs> I think that's a good bet. Yeah, but that's a good restaurant, but I know it's not there, dear. <laughs> well, Susan, where is it at? I'd like to come see you. I'm, I'm a big tipper. I'd like to tip you, you know, give you like a you know $50 bill or I'll, something. Yeah. Is it Friday or Sunday on 54th and uh, right there at Harley Davidson? It's uh, uh, tomorrow. It, it's, from, on, it's on Saturday, yeah. actually, noon to two. Saturday? Oh, well, I'll meet you there. Well, I'm assuming that that's the area that you live in, and that's the, is it the Leoman? Is it the Lel- Lelman. It's the Lelman. It's the best place where they sell crack, Pinellas Park. It's the, All it's crackheads the, live here. It's yeah. the it's the Le- Lelman area, and it is it is a very much a bad area. In fact, people like you bring down my property it's value. Not Susan. really a bad area. Well, it's They're not really a bad not. it's not a bad area since Jim Coates cleaned it up. It's but it used to be a real bad area. It's gotten a lot better. You know, you know, Coates, ca- Jim Coates, the sheriff, actually put a detail in there. Yep. And really, 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 I mean, it's like I think crime's down like seventy two percent or something like. Yep. I saw a statistic. Uh, from a council member. Yeah, the council member was Ken Welch. Actually. Yeah, Ken Welch did a survey. Yep. And the Lelman area actually is a lot better since Coates really, put really. Me in really, prison, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, uh, Jim Co- Jim Coates Jim Coates is fine. Has put you in prison. So <laughs> they, you know what, Brett? <laughs> the task force that they got in the Lelman area is working quite nicely. Yep. It's a great job by by Sheriff Coates. There. Exactly. I mean, you know, that's isn't it because they're shooting all the people. Well, well you know, I mean, I mean, you know what? You know, hey, deputies need to be shoot that people. as it may. See, hey, you got to take out the trash. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you got to take out the trash, my friend. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, the most ultimate uh, show of force is needed when you get some crackhead that's, you know, slinging a blade or something like that. And seeing as yeah, there's a school in that, that neighborhood, I mean. <clears throat> so, I mean, are you working at the Waffle House on 54th? If you are, let's, you know. No, wait. I'm not working at the Waffle House on 54th. Well, where are you working? Tell me right now. You obviously want to come see us tomorrow at Jim's. Uh, and so, why can't we come see you, and we'll be working? Because you'll probably get me fired. <laughs> no. Susan. This damn Susan. No. Oh, no, hold on, Susan. To the contrary. Sorry, sorry about the word. Hold on, hold on. To the, to the contrary. I worked hard to get this job. Give me three weeks. Uh, uh, no, Susan, to the contrary. I want to actually for you to keep your job, because that will keep you off the streets doing bad stuff. Exactly. So, I don't want you to get fired. Well, there's a Denny's on US 19. I want to go back to prison. <laughs> Denny's. There's a Denny's on US 19 right by in the same area. Yeah. So, it's either the Denny's. Or the Waffle House and the, the Lelman area, because you don't have a you don't have a license, so anywhere you work, you got to walk to or, or ride a bike. Damn, y'all looked up my sorry about the word again. Y'all looked up my record that quick. Huh? Oh. How do you know I don't have a license? How do you know I didn't get a hardship? Because you told me last time oh, I spoke that cool. you didn't have one. So I told you you woke me up. Just name where you're working. <laughs> Come on, tell me the shift and and the place that you work for, and I'll send the Bubba Army in there, and we'll be big spenders. No <laughs> Bubba Army. I don't believe you got a job then. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she's got a job. No, she's lying. How many packs okay. of cigarettes do you smoke a day, Susan? That that rasp is second to none. Don't I got lie. asthma. I'll say. Yeah. Because you smoke. Because you smoke three packs of basics a day. Basics? Yeah, I smoke Marlboro, honey. Mm-hmm. Smoked Marlboro the whole time. I was in prison, too. You smoke Marlboro Reds? Marlboro 100. Straight cowboy well, killer. Yeah, 100s are even worse than the Reds. Yeah. They're bigger. Yeah. Straight. <laughs> straight. Long, see, Ned's. That's a woman after Ned's heart, man. Oh. Nice. Really, I don't have that many asthma attacks on Marlboro Red. Is the Ned uh, generic cigarettes and the DTC flow? Ned uh, Ned smokes Marlboro Reds in a box. Yeah, huh? my own cigarette. I smoked them in prison. That's what they sell in prison. Mm. Goody. Now get me some uh, double order smother cover. I'll go to prison to buy them. <coughs> now where now? I'll take a where grand slam in prison now. <laughs> Ned wants a grand slam and Spice oh. wants a double smothered and covered. And if you're if you're working at Denny's, oh. get me a moons over my hammy. Oh yeah, I had to get a moons over my hammy. Like a rooty tooty, fast and fruity, <laughs> fresh and fruity. <laughs> you know, fast, oh. fresh and fast. So hey, why wouldn't you take my call the other day? I had a, you know I had applied at this uh, phone sex job. And I used to as a reference. You know that, right? This would be the worst phone sex ever. With that <laughs> voice on the other end of the line, yeah. I would hang hey, up immediately. Hey, you should have heard the thing that they, did, that they had you listen to. That was the worst phone sex. All yeah. I get was a bunch of hard breathing. Yeah. That was all, a waste all, of money. All, all I get from you is a bunch of hard rasping. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what are you wearing? In the morning. <laughs> and, then, and then you hear the flick of the lighter in the background. No, there's no lighter flicking. That was. What's your name? Part. How many? How many packs of how many packs of uh, Marlboro 100s are you up to a day? Are you are you a two packer? No. Solid one though. Yeah. 
How about Danny Bonaducci? We talked to him yesterday, and the others three packs a day. Oh, I my. missed your How? show yesterday. I was getting a stupid job. Well, I'm glad. You know what, Susan? <laughs> we're glad for you that you got this stupid job. It'll keep you off the streets of Lillman, uh, oh. and, it'll, and it'll keep you know that much that much more crack off the streets. How much crack were you slinging when you were slinging at your highest level, Susan? What were you? What were the amount that you were slinging? That could incriminate me. I think I can't. I can't hear you, honey. That could incriminate me. No, honey, you've already done your time. They can't <laughs> incriminate. Yeah, but they know these. Mythic That's a new dating codes, service you know, right there. Incriminate. <laughs> incriminate. I like that. You've heard of eHarmony. You've heard of Match.com. Now go to Susan. Susan's presents. Incriminate. Incriminate. <laughs> what an ignoramus! <laughs> <laughs> Susan, you're not going to you're not going to tell me where you you're not going to tell us where you work, so we can come down there and give and be and be big spenders and give you big tips and tell you how much we love you and the whole nine yards. And we're glad that you're you know, off the streets of Lelman. Next week. All right, we'll call us next week or email us. Obviously, you're very proficient on the computer. You've gotten two emails uh, to me quite briskly. We'll see you at Jim's tomorrow, and don't forget to wear your Waffle House name tag. Okay. And don't, wear, don't, wear, don't, wear, don't forget to wear that uh, spaghetti strap. So that we can okay. see those tattoos on your uh, on your on your chest and breasts area. <laughs> there ain't no tattoos. You better look again on that that DOC thing. All right, baby. <laughs> you better look again on the DOC, man. She 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 automatically Brent has to she doesn't, have a, she doesn't have a MySpace. She's no. got a, she's got a <laughs> DOC right. profile. Save, save that. That's her information. Yeah. Okay. When she tells people, hey man, you know I don't have a MySpace, but if you go to the Florida Department of Corrections, just, just go to the DOC. You'll see, you'll see my picture right up there. Here's my inmate number, <laughs> and, and then it's got a good little picture of me. <laughs> Her top friend is Jim Coates. <laughs> I just wish I could have showed you guys how great they were. You are listening to the Bubba Radio Network. Do you want to hear all the times Hulk Hogan or Tucker Carlson called in? We have it all for you on BubbaArmyHQ.com. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Our good friend Neil from Clips for Sale. Clips, oh, yeah. Clips the number for sale.com, which, by the way, is my neighbor. Uh, just bought a new house out in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. And, and just had a brand new baby as well. Awesome. His wife or his uh, fiance had a brand new baby. Brand new baby girl. In fact, their older uh, daughter, I think, is five, and they she comes and plays with my stepdaughter, Julia, all the time. So congratulations to Neil from Clips for Sale and his new baby, new house. And uh, he is celebrating by... Uh, Buying us lunch today, <laughs> uh, courtesy of, uh, of course, Yaya's. God, it's that certainly makes a long show better, does it not? Mm-hmm, Brent, are yeah. you going to partake in the Yaya's today? I feel, I'm feeling much better. Yes. All right, I hope so. Yes, I would take that as a little bit of an insult. <laughs> well, I can't insult you. Uh, finishing up on the emails, uh, and then Spice got to get into the Josh Howard thing. Brent also got to get into the Bill Maher thing. Manson has a new offering, and uh, I guess a person uh, was going to jump off the Skyway last night and got stopped by a lovely state trooper, so thank you very much. I don't know if I should thank you or I should say you should let him go. I, thought, I heard it was a Skyway fishing pier. <laughs> yeah, you can't. I mean, that's ca- a big difference. You can't. <laughs> it's like when... Uh, when it's like 20 feet. <laughs> well, it's like when that fat bitch that Spider used to Selma. date. Selma. Yeah. Selma tried to jump off the Gandhi Bridge to kill herself. <laughs> I swan going- dive off the Gandhi. I do cannonballs off the Remember, Gandhi. she wrote like a poem, or she's like, a, like, a, like a suicide letter that says, Tonight, at midnight... I will take my life <laughs> by jumping off the Gandhi Bridge. <laughs> I mean, the only way you're going to j- get killed is if you would happen to jump onto the pilings head first and paralyze yourself. <laughs> Remember that? Oh, yeah. Just uh, some, uh, just a few more emails. Just wanted to take a moment to mark out to you guys. Lived in St. Pete for well over three years, and now I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. I've been listening online every day on theboneonline.com sometimes and rock105i others. I wish the morning show would get syndicated in Raleigh because a morning here, morning show radio here really sucks. You have no idea how hor- horrible the morning choices are. Uh, let me just give you an idea. I got Russ Parr. I got Bob and Sherry and Ace and TJ. The worst of all, Clear Channel uh, owns Bob and the show and the showgram. Please talk to Cox about bringing you guys to Raleigh. I don't know if we have any Cox stuff in Raleigh, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Uh, I called into Bubba this morning, and he gave me tickets to the Twins-Rays game this weekend. I plan uh, I plan to come tomorrow to pick them up, but where do I get my tickets? I had a bad connection with whomever I talked to this morning. Uh, thank you, Jamie uh, Schaefer. How, Spice, how do they get their tickets if they've won double They have tickets? to go directly to the Cox building, but uh, give me that email if you would, and I'll okay. pass it over to the guys. Yeah, okay, Brent's got it. There you go. Thank you. you can, I guess you can email her directly. All right. Oh, wow. I uh, love when you guys start, on, uh, start in on the political stuff. 
It's what's going on in the world right now, and I think you guys should continue it on. But anyway, I've heard you guys making stabs at uh, at Palin, saying that she looks like the mom from King of the Hill. She does. <laughs> Have you seen the resemblance of McCain? He looks like the grandfather of King of the Hill. Keep up the good work. <laughs> she kind of does look like uh, Pe- like uh, Peggy Hill. <laughs> this is a quite lengthy email. Uh, uh, Bubba and gang, while reading a blog tonight, I came across a very interesting post. I've copied it on the link below. Essentially, the author accuses MJ of class uh, warfare because of statements he made during his September 18th afternoon drive show on Schnitt. Well, it was yesterday. Uh, The gist of this, MJ told his personal trainer... Uh, an image I find hilarious. <laughs> That's the worst personal trainer in the world. Oh, man. This, guy, this guy, this this guy, by the way, is from Jacksonville and very well versed. Let me let, let me just read his writing. How well this is. Ready? The gist of it is this, comma. Uh, MJ told his personal trainer an image that I find hilarious. That if Senator Senator Obama won the election, he MJ would fire the trainer, an Obama supporter, as his. Ev- <laughs> As, it, as his evidence, he cited the, uneduca- uh, the uneducated idea that a tax increase on, a, on the upper 5% will cause a reduction in spending by those individuals. Him. Well, I'm glad you got yourself wrong. And is the upper 5%. What a narcissistic, full of himself asswipe. This is a, quis- a qu- quintessential, quintessential. Yeah, argument for supply side economics. But it should be noted and shouted if possible. For the past eight years, we've operated within the uh, the, the something. Uh, and guess what? 6.1% of the population is unemployed. That's over 18 million Americans. The, the, the logic is clear. Supply-side economics does not work. Sure, a very small minority of the population gets richer, but the vast majority is worse off. So to me, it seems that MJ could care less about America. Meanwhile, we are witnessing one of the worst domestic crises we've had since September 11th, 2001. On a final point, if I may... Uh, if these uh, dis- 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 disastrous economic policies are allowed to continue, there is, if Senator McCain is elected, the whole house of cards could come, come crumbling down. Therefore, if, a true con- if your true concern is the, stabil- the stability and domestic tranquility, uh, I've read that somewhere uh, of, the, of the country that, that Obama is the right vote. I'll be calling you around 7.45 tomorrow morning and hope that you, you can express this opinion. <coughs> Here is the blog. You know what, Brad? I'm going to get that, uh, this guy's email to you. He's pretty, he's pretty on point. Yeah, the, uh, the uh, stability and domestic tranquility is George Washington Tran- type terms. <laughs> I will yeah. tell you this, though, man. I, I, I was watching some stuff on TV. And you know what? Both parties are to blame. If you guys think that we're just bleeding liberals here on my show... I, I'm as disgusted at some of the senators and re, and representatives that have got, that that were elected three and a half or four years ago uh, to the House and Senate, and how they've allowed they've done nothing the, exactly. So you know what? I am equally disgusted with them. Yeah, they came in with a mandate from the American people to do something. They did nothing. Yeah, they no, did nothing, they and did that's nothing. why their that's why their approval rating is lower than Bush. So so please don't <laughs> think that you know we're just that, that you know we at, at this particular point think that Obama Barack Obama is a little bit of a change. And has a shot to do a couple good things, but I all think that they're crooks. Every last one of them, except for Ron Paul. <laughs> except for Ron Paul, he called in 2002. He called this housing crisis on the money. Well, I'm talking about the people that are in office right now. Oh, well, yeah. he is in office. No, well, I, I understand. Yeah, I heard something. I, I thought was so funny yesterday. I'm driving home, and occasionally I hit the button on AM, and it'll be on Sean Hannity. And I'll listen for a minute. And yeah, then that I, Ron Paul stuff? Yeah, right here. Okay, go, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'll listen for a minute, and then I'll want to blow my brains out. But he's talking to Newt Gingrich, and here's what, here's what they said. <laughs> they said, well, the Democrats' plan was to raise taxes on a prosperous economy, but now the economy is so bad, what are they going to do now? <laughs> and everything the Republicans are saying is talking about how bad it is now. But they've is, made it that way. They've been in power for eight years. <laughs> well, I'll tell both you parties thing. yesterday. I'm, made I'm me, sick. Made I'm me sick, sick of. My I'm sick of both parties. I'm sick of the representatives and Democrat. I'm sorry. I'm sick of the Congress and the House that are that are majority Democrat barely. Uh, but you know they are for the last four years. Their approval ratings are lower than the president's. I'm sick of the president uh, and, and his uh, and his. His, Buffoonery. His, his speech yesterday looked like the speech of a monarch. He sp- spoke five words and then ran and th- answered no questions. Ron Paul, man, you know he's 
He, he was treated like a nut, but he was right. Oh, uh, if he only, only he was a tall, good-looking guy like Mitt Romney. If we could just put Ron Paul's beliefs into Mitt Romney's body, or Charlie Crist's body, or just some well, real good-looking politician, polished. My God, you'd have a super politician. Yeah, if the Founding Fathers were alive, they'd be going, why isn't everybody voting for Ron Paul? He's the <laughs> only one that stands for what we founded this country on. Ron it's, Paul was in front of, you know, obviously he's a, he's a representative, right? He's a, from Texas, yeah. He's, yeah. A, he's, a, he's a state, he's a, uh, I'm sorry, a U.S. Con- representative. Congressman. U.S. congressman. Yep. Uh, from Texas. And uh, ela- one year ago, a little over a year ago, he was in front of the House. And, you know, let's, just, let's just take, honest, you know, let's, let's finally come together here. And say you Republicans, this is this should are, have been your are, guy. Are, are 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 as disgusted with what's happening in our country as us Democrats are, and I'm not a Democrat. I'm, you know, us Americans just are not doing real good right now. Our country is hurting; it really is. And you know what? Let's not say it's a quick fix for Barack Obama or it's a quick fix for McCain. Let's take the presidential aspect of who's running out of it. Let's talk about the dire straits that we're in today. And let's take the D's and the R's and throw them right on out, and let's just talk about what's happening in our world today. Because it was both of them standing up there last night, creating a new government agency to take over the bad Mm. credit of the banks. Yeah, so anyway, hear me out. This is Ron Paul a year ago, speaking to the House. Mr. Chairman, I am pleased to address uh, the... Now mind you, this is a year ago, and we know what we know what we're going through now. We got bailouts. I mean, God, where do I start with what we got going on right now? And he started this rhetoric in 02, by the way. House tonight about the budget, because there's been a lot of uh, uh, concern expressed here today on both sides of the aisle about uh, the kind of financial trouble we're in, and there's no doubt about. And I got I to I I tell you, man, we only have our media to blame. <laughs> We only have our media to blame as to why this guy has been spun as a nut job. Yeah, because he's not. Yeah, because any any free thinker are the one, any free thinkers are the ones that actually support him. But if you're not a free thinker and you just buy what every media outlet tells you, they ignored him completely. Out that, but sometimes I think we go back and forth, uh, spending more time blaming each other rather than dealing with the uh, real problem. And you know that in itself <laughs> that in itself is is huge because you know look at us. We're guilty of that. Rather than to look at the real problem and find out who could possibly fix it, we blame. We blame the president. We blame the House. We blame the senators. We blame Obama. He can't fix it. He's done this, this, and this. We blame McCain. He can't fix it. He's an idiot. He's done this, this, and this. But it's right. We play the blame, we play the blame game. Rather than say, you know what? This is the druthers that we're in. Let's stop worrying about who created it. Let's roll up our sleeves and let's fix it together. One of the contentions I've had about the budget is that we look at it as an accounting problem rather than a philosophy problem because the spending occurs because of what we accept as the proper role of government. And right now it's assumed by the country as well as the Congress that the proper role of government is to uh, run our lives, run the economy, run the welfare state and police the world. And all of a sudden, it uh, puts a lot of pressure on the budget. Today, the national debt is going up almost $600 billion. And the economy is getting weaker. There's no doubt about it. Now, mind you, this wasn't last night. This was a little over a year ago when things weren't really that bad. We didn't have AIG getting bailed out. We didn't have major, major, major financial firms getting bailed out. We didn't have banks getting bailed out. We didn't have banks shutting down. We didn't have the stock market at an all-time low. We weren't in a recession or a depression or anything. We're in a recession. It's going to get much worse, which means that the deficit is going to get a lot worse. And I'm predicting within a couple years, it will not surprise me one bit to see the national debt, the national obligation for future generations to rise in one year of three quarters of a trillion dollars. And that is. And we are now at a half a trillion right now. Are we yeah, that's correct. Right. Is a very possible number. <laughs> and, and again, man, you know, let's come together. All you people that think I'm this, you know, bleeding liberal and all, it, it, let's come together and let's take the presidential race out of it. The president can't fix it on his own. No. I don't care who it is. You're going to vote for who you are, and I'm going to vote for who I am, and I don't got to shove my beliefs down your throat, and I'm not going to listen to yours. So, you know, we're at an impasse with regards to that. But here's the deal. 
can we at least uh, not, can we at least all agree that we are in a crisis? Agreed. We're in a housing crisis. We're in a credit crisis with with China. We're in a spending crisis. We're in a war crisis. We're in just an absolute Ugh, we're in energy an ab- crisis. We're in, yeah, we're in an energy <laughs> crisis. I mean, we are in a crisis of all types of different levels. Can we at least all agree on that? Absolutely. And you know, yeah. partly to blame to the president, and partly to blame on the House and the and the and the Senate. They're all crooks. They're all ass wipes. They're all a bunch of mealy mouth talking out of both sides of their mouth dicks. And our entire system needs a douche from top to bottom. After their performance last night, I would vote against everybody that's in office. Yeah. If it's got an incumbent, I I don't care if it's a Republican that's running against a Democrat or a Democrat running against a Republican or an independent or a libertarian. Get the guy that's in there now out. Because we are broken. And, and, and then make your presidential choice as to who you feel you like. I, I, I'm, I'm done talking about the president. I, I just get way too much heat. But can, can you guys at least chime in on one triple eight six nine bubba the, the pulse of the people. And, and let me know, man. Do you at least agree that we're broken and we need to be fixed? And that we need a douche, whomever that may or may not be. And this Ron Paul guy was dead on. But the media spun him out as a kook. Uh, it, it had no, you know, they put him to the far left on all debates. They didn't even include him on some. Uh, it, it, they wouldn't let him talk. They uh, then the analysts afterwards would be like that Ron Paul guy. Wow, he's really out to lunch. And the poll, like on on the, on the internet, like on CNN.com, would be like who won the debate. Ron Paul would win and win <laughs> on the internet poll, like eighty two percent on who won the debate. And then and they, they, they would just ignore it. Well, then then, then the uh, the people that you know do the armchair quarterback would be like, well, you know, Huckabee really knocked it out of the park there. <laughs> Well, really, he didn't. I mean, they didn't say anything. Ron Paul's the only one that said anything. The way I see it is there's only one way that we're going to attack this. I mean, if you're a true, true, true conservative to to the way that the, the, that the, that the definition of conservative is truly written, yep. you will be a Ron Paul purely. You will absolutely hinge on this guy's every word. And not only that, you know, here's a guy who writes thousands of articles on his beliefs and his solutions. Not other politicians do that. Other politicians are afraid to put anything in writing because it comes back and haunts them. <laughs> and here's this guy who puts them all down in writing and says, this is what I believe, these are the solutions, this is how to fix it. And that is, decide what our government ought to be doing. And Our government has just gotten way, I mean, way too big. Our, our government, and, and hey, I don't care who you blame on the deal, has, ju- you know, it's increased tenfold. And it's just gotten way, way, way too big. The Constitution is very clear. The government ought to preserve our liberties, give us a strong national defense. It shouldn't run our lives. It shouldn't run the economy. It shouldn't police the world. We're not supposed to be the policemen of the world. But everybody talks about it. And both sides of the aisle have no hesitation to spend every cent the executive branch asked for to run a war that was never declared. We now spend $1 trillion a year going up. This year it's going to go over $1 trillion to run the operations overseas. Now, mind you, too. Oh. Now, mind <laughs> a you. Trillion. This guy is not, you know. He's a Republican. This, no, this guy's a Republican, and he's, and he's an elected. You know, he is a, a, a U.S. representative. He's in office. So yeah, I don't think people really give that guy I don't think that they they don't really know that Ron Paul is a standing representative. No, and he's from the been, state of Texas. And he has been he has been hitting this drum beat since the 80s. That means all the foreign aid and all the military a trillion dollars to do things we shouldn't be doing. And finally, I got by the way I got a bunch of good people on hold. I want to get to you people. Please don't go anywhere. Thanks. Really like to get the pulse of the people on this deal. Again, let's set aside the pres- the president, okay? Let's uh, we're not I'll read you a sentence from the New York Times today that shows you that the president has nothing to do with anything. Stand by. My idea is to have a strong national defense and to get this budget under control, reject the notion that we need to run an empire. We can't afford it. It's going to come down. It always comes down. It has come down all throughout history because eventually the currency is destroyed. We're- and that's what's happening to uh, us now? That's so true. <clears throat> oh, you, my God. Uh, this, again, this taken, this taken from a speech well over a year ago. And our currency is being destroyed because we're just printing it like it's going out of style. We're no longer backed by gold. And we are spending, you know, a half a billion dollars a month in Iraq just flooding the world with our, with our currency. Uh, and, and it's just becoming, it's becoming absolutely, you know, no value. We're in, uh, we're in a hundred. And I don't care, again, what partisan you, you, you like. It's the truth. It's the That's truth. It. 
It's that that's the truth. And if you're going to argue with me on that, then you and retard Tommy need to go have coffee this morning. <laughs> right. In 30 countries, we have 700 bases. Our military now is in worse shape than it was five years ago. Good point, man. We have 700 abroad bases. <laughs> I mean, I don't you think we should strategically? Okay, this is the day and age of you know. Really, I I, I I'm not an expert on war, Brent, and you 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 probably are far more than me. But aren't we on? Aren't we in the in the in the times now where ground presence, physical ground troop presence, is as not as important now as it ever has been? And we have so many other weapons and satellite technology and stuff that we don't even know about that we don't have to have 700 abroad bases or even presence where we can, you know, basically button up and, and, and consolidate those and strategically put, you know, a couple hundred of them around the world and still be and bring the other people home. Absolutely. Imagine if you took just half those bases or, or just 200 of those bases, closed them, put them on the border of Mexico. Yes. And all the personnel and troops put them there. Yes. And fought, you know, the illegal legal immigration situation. According to our military. So it's time we... You know, the more I hear on this Ron Paul talk, man, I, 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 I might... I might if he's, is he going to be on the ballot or no? He will not be on the ballot. The closest thing to Ron Bob Paul Barr. will be Bob Barr. Yeah. But Bob Barr is not Ron Paul. He's not Ron Paul. No, he's not. And he does not have the record of Ron Paul for being uh, a conservative. But a vote for Bob Barr is a vote to end the two-party system. We look at the strategic, the philosophical problems, and I say unless we do this, this will, be, this will end badly. It's going to end with a major economic crisis. It's going to be worse. Again, this is over <laughs> over a year ago. Worldwide, and we here at home will suffer not only economically, but inevitably under these conditions, the people lose their liberty, and our liberties are being eroded every single day that we're here. So yes, we take an oath to obey and uphold the Constitution against foreign domestic, but we're domestic, and we should protect our rights and our budget and the greatness of this country. Thank you. I mean. He loves our country, and he absolutely, to the letter of the Constitution, upholds it. And that's what that's what they're sure you're sworn to do. Whether you're a private in the army or you're the president of the United States, you, when you take that oath, you swear to uphold Dan, and protect the Constitution. Dan Tampa, go ahead. Good morning, fellas. Good morning, buddy. Hey, um, I just kind of answered. You guys kind of answered my question a second ago. I wanted to know if we could vote for Ron Paul, and I guess you can't. So voting for Bob Barr does away with the two. Just, uh, well, I mean, it's a vote to end the two-party system. If, if, Bob, if, if Barr, Bob Barr could get 5%. Just 5%. If he could get 5% of the country to vote for him, then the, the federal government has to start doing federal matching funds for a third party. Then has, They have to recognize that third party. That would, that would be wonderful. And the audience that you guys have, I mean, I'm, I've been listening to you ever since 93.3. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people like like me agree with everything that you guys are saying. So why not? Instead of pushing Obama like you guys have been, start pushing this Bob, whatever his name was. Thank you, Dan. I'm not pushing anybody. I'm done pushing people. I'm done. I'm disgusted at the at the state of our country right now, and I'm not going to pigeonhole this show or myself into thinking that one of the two idiots that are running for president can fix it. Uh, and I, I, you know, I have my opinions on that, but it just pisses you people off, and it scares Cox. So I guess I've been censored somewhat. All right, no so, big deal. So be it. <laughs> so be it. I got a job. <laughs> right. The last time I fought since uh, the being censored, I, uh, I I censored myself right out of the business. <laughs> <laughs> and I censored I censored myself right out of the business. <laughs> and for two years, I thought to myself, yeah, I just maybe should have shut my big mouth up a little bit. Thomas, so, Thomas Paine died a, a broken, destitute man. Glenn, St. Pete. Hi, buddy. Hi, Bella. Uh, this is more a question for Brent. I was on Bob Barr's website for the first time yesterday, kind of reading over the Libertarian Party and kind of what they stand for, um, and I was pretty impressed by it. But then I also saw a news release where, I guess, Ron Paul had declined the offer from Bob Barr to run as the VP, and I was just a little curious as to why. Well, because, you knew. Well, you know. because Ron Paul is more qualified to be president than Bob Barr, so he would not take a VP position or a backseat to Bob Barr. Mm -hmm. And they've been colleagues. Yeah. They've been colleagues in the Congress for a lot of years. Bob Barr was a representative from Georgia, and uh, Bob Barr's got a long record before running as a libertarian for being against personal freedoms and personal liberties. So I'm sure Ron Paul's got an issue with that as well. Oh, okay. There you have it, Glenn. There's your answer. Thank you, Brent, for the uh, for the information. Tim, hi. 
Hey, how you doing, fellas? Tim from Jackson. Hey, I'm a, I'm a blue-collar man, retired military. My daughter's also, uh, she did two tours in Iraq. You know, I get dirt under my fingernails every day for a living. I keep a balance checkbook. I don't bounce checks. Now, why is it all these people that have gone to college and read a bunch of books and parted their ass off for four years can't figure out why this has happened to our country? <laughs> you know, as simple as that Tim is. Tim says, why do a bunch of people <laughs> that went to college for four years partied their ass off and read a bunch of books and screwed our, and, and you know what, sir, Tim, as simple as that is, yep. you're kind of right because those are the people that are running our country right now and are just totally screwing it up. And they're the CEOs of these banks, and they probably got more than a four-year degree. They probably got, you know, five and six years degrees in business and finance, and they can't figure out how <laughs> that they're writing bad loans. Yeah, if you, if you ran the BRN like the government runs, you know, this country, oh, we don't be out of work. We would be out of work in a week. Then I'd ask for a bailout. <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> Beth, Fort Myers, huh? Well, if I, if, I, if I ran the Bubba Radio Network and my various other businesses the way, then I would be writing my – you guys know that I don't write myself very big you know, checks at all. I would be just writing huge amounts of checks to myself. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'd be you know, riding, riding hard, and then, uh, then I'd ask for a bailout. After cooking the books. <laughs> don't, hey, it doesn't sound too bad. I might, I might start doing it. Beth, Fort Myers. Hi, Beth. Hi. Good morning. Good morning, Beth. Hey, I listen to you guys every morning, and this morning I just had to call and put in my two cents because I can tell you, you know, firsthand how bad things are. I work in bankruptcy law, mm. and um, just in Fort Myers alone, bankruptcies from last year to this year are up over 130%. So the fact is, I mean, we're obviously this country is hurting, and it's hurting pretty bad. And I think that it's a shame that, you know, the politicians will stand up there and they'll tell you all day long about how, you know, oh, I can fix this, I can fix that, we need a change. But yet, you know, the average person is going to be hesitant to stand up and say, hey, you know what, if we put this person in office, are they really going to do anything? Well, you know, Beth, I, 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 you know, we all have ourselves to blame, and we, you know, maybe we're not up to speed on who we should put in there. But I mean, we're, we're, we're. Sc- I think our country is scrambling right now. I don't think there is a quick fix uh, on the presidential side, or I, I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know who's to blame, and I don't know who's going to fix it. To be honest with you. Well, you know, I think the whole thing about it is it starts from the top down, and the fact is, is that I mean, you guys hit it on the head. I mean, let's face it, everyone from the president to Congress to the Senate. You know, everyone is playing a part in this whole, you know, downfall. And you're right. I mean, when you said that, um, you know, there's just a bunch of, you know, overpaid people who are sitting there with their thumb up their ass. Well, you know, not here's doing the deal. What they're supposed to be doing. Let, let, and it's, it's pathetic. Let's just start from the top here. And I'm only going to make an observation. You know, and there's going to be a lot of people that disagree with me. Okay. And I'm not going to, this is not a McCain or a Barack Obama endorsement or, 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 or you know, or, or a, you know, a bad, a bad thing. But here's the deal. If you just and I again, I'm probably going to polarize. This is going to be somewhat of a polarizing uh, of a comment, but uh, one would think uh, that we would probably be in a little bit better shape if we would just not be spending a half a billion dollars a month in Iraq and no, we twelve could, billion. Dollars. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. If we weren't spending twelve billion dollars a month in a in a war that that mirrors Vietnam, that looks like it's going to be unwinnable. Uh, and and we had that money back into our country, spending it on you know on our country, and we had those troops, you know, back in our country, defending our country on our soil, and out of the seven hundred you know bases that we have strategically located around the world, we closed half of them and brought those people back. One would think that that would be a huge amount of savings, and we could start there. Now you know, obviously, people are going to. Uh, uh, disagree with me that really think that this war should be happening. So I'm not going to be able to persuade those people. But I, I think even the Republicans now feel as if this war probably is not working out the way they thought it was going to be. No, I think if you would ask Republicans like Lincoln, Lincoln Chafee from Rhode Island, who got voted out in 06, I think if you ask Republicans along those lines, every Republican incumbent senator, even George Allen from Virginia, whose father was a coach of the Washington Redskins, right. got voted out in 06 because people were mad at the war. People are so mad at the war, they're mad at the Democrats for not doing what they were told. Were told. Yeah. Well, so the Democrats I mean, and Republicans know, are to blame. And then last night they created... Both, both parties are to blame. Last night they stood up there together. Pelosi, Reid, the head of the SEC, they stood up there together last night and created a hand new... Hand in hand. Hand in hand. Created a new government agency that's going to take over the bad... Debt that these banks wrote to credit to, to debt. To so debtors. they're both to blame, and I think you know at the end of the day, uh, 
Uh, Beth, and I think, in my opinion, you know, I think it starts and stops yeah. with. I, I think it starts. A lot of it starts with, with, with our with our decision to go over to Iraq and spend you know twelve billion a month. That's I mean, absolutely, absolutely. I have a brother in law right now that's over in Iraq, and he's one of those who says, you know, I understand why we're here, but I still don't think that you know our continued presence here is needed. And I'm like, well, it's not. You know, the fact is, is that you're right. I mean, we're spending billions upon billions of dollars. You know, on people who don't want us there. Well, I mean, okay. If you you take, if you take, if you take the crux of the problem, we went over there and we, you know, we found Saddam Hussein. I mean, yeah, we found and his sons. And his sons. We killed them. We got the you know guy that has you know brutally killed you know tons, uh, uh, tens of thousands of people. So we got that guy out of there and we executed him. We killed his kids. Now you know, let's just gracefully get out. We, we that's a win. No, we, yeah, we didn't lose. We didn't. We didn't get our you know we didn't get our asses kicked. We, we had some casualties. Oh. And, uh, but let's just you know hey, mm-hmm. we, we got this guy out. He's a bad guy. And here here's your country. And 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 good, good luck. Good to Good you. luck to you guys. Get, getting Saddam Hussein. I, I, that when yep. once they got Saddam Hussein, I would have said okay, that's it. We won. See you later. So anyway, Good night. Beth, man, thank you so uh, so much for your call. Hopefully we'll be in Fort Myers hey. someday. Hey, that would be great. Well, you guys already are. I listen to you every morning down here, so it's fabulous. Thank you, honey. You know, rapping Ronnie Reagan did the best thing. From 1980 to 88, the Iranians and the Iraqis were at war. And Ronald, Ronald Reagan armed both sides and said, kill each other all you want. Five things for you and five for you. <laughs> yeah. five, five for the good guys and five for the other guys. <laughs> Michelle from Tampa, hi. Hi, I it, we we really must be in a state if I'm calling your show and saying that I agree with you 100. percent I'm not a long time listener, but wow, you're you're absolutely right. The lack of leadership in this country is appalling. Um, I'm watching these debates and I'm watching these candidates, and to this day, I can't tell you what the issues are because I don't think they know what the issues are. We're going to do this and we're going to do that, but no one's saying how they're going to do anything. And for the first time, I really don't know how I'm going to vote this year. I don't know if I am going to vote this year. Well, uh, vote, Aaliyah, you know, I mean, uh, don't do not not vote because even if you don't know who you're going to vote for president, man, there's a lot of people that need to be ousted out of office, <laughs> b- Democrats and Republicans. And again, I think Brent had it best on the head. Uh, basically, I'm just going to vote against every incumbent, regardless of what their party is, because I'm sick of every everybody that's in there needs to go. Yeah, we um <clears throat> we've been mismanaged, and um, it's just been corporate greed over the years and government greed. I don't know where the term civil service went to because we don't have those anymore, and, and we need that. You shouldn't be in government for your paycheck. You should be in government for your love of this country and for wanting to serve it well, and I, I don't see that. Well, I don't want you to go throw up now because you're disgusted that you had to participate in my show today because you hate me. I know. I'm really, really surprised. But you, you guys are doing a good job. I'm, I'm impressed. Well, why now? Why did you? Why do you hate us so much, Michelle? I mean, <laughs> um, I just, I don't know. I just, it wasn't, you know, the whole NASCAR and strippers just kind of wasn't my thing. We don't do. We, 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 we do. We do very little of that, honey. Very, very little of that. Oh, well, you do that, and yeah, you used to, but not so much anymore. I, I would flip over every now and again, and I'm kind of like, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, what what um, else do you listen to? I, yeah, I, I see the difference, and and well, I think now, you guys are doing now, a good don't, job. don't lie, Michelle. I want you to be honest. What you know? What else do you listen to? Um, I will listen to an alternative. Um, I don't listen to MJ. I, I can't stand him. He's well, so let me ask you a question. How how old are you, Michelle? Fisher and Barr. I'm 37. All right, so you know you're right. You're right down that you're right. You're a great demographic. So you're 37 years old, and 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 you, you refuse to listen to MJ. Boy, that Brent, that's got to be disturbing for Clear Channel because a that's woman trouble. like Michelle, that's you know headed to work, got her act together, 37 year old female, that should be right down his demographic. Sure. 25, 54 year old females, you know, he does dominate that. Why don't Why don't you? Uh, do you find it corny and hokey? And what do you, what, What's the it, problem with it? it? It doesn't. I don't. There's nothing that adds. There's no value there. I get no value from that. It adds nothing to my day. His <laughs> voice alone is so annoying. I you just can't listen to it. It, it sounds like something that my my. 16-year-old should be listening to. Well, that's that's why um, he rests most of his rating success on kids. And are you familiar that he's suing me now? His Him and his wife are suing me based on name-calling. I, I have I have read that in the papers, yes. Yeah. Um, that's, that's interesting. He, so, claims, he yeah. claims himself not to be a public figure. <laughs> yeah, he, you know, he, 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 you know, public figures are, you know, obviously open to scrutiny and, and parody and stuff like that. You know that. 
uh, our great country was built upon your First Amendment right to be able to poke fun at, at that, those sort of things. And he now, but you, but you can't poke fun at him. He can poke fun at Britney and OJ and all the, well, his whole show's based on TMZ and, and, and celebrity mess ups. But God forbid that somebody reverses the tables on him, you get sued. I'm, did you know, Michelle, I'm $100,000 into defending this frivolous lawsuit? Is that not just disgusting? I'm- it is disgusting, and and again, that's kind of you know look at look at where we're at as a country as a whole. This and, is where we're at. This is not how it's supposed to be. And his demeanor, and I've and I've been told this by our inside sources are, uh, is that he is going to continue this because he does he does have more money than me. Uh, he, you know, he, he didn't take a four four year hiatus like I had to, and and have bills to pay. He's got a lot more money than I do, and he said he's going to just keep churning and churning this case until it bankrupts me and Cox has to fire me. That's what his mo is. And Br- meanwhile, Brent, it's not even a legitimate lawsuit. I mean, like, you know, had I done something bad and, you know, ran into a side of a car and, and, and injured his family, well, then that's, that's a legitimate lawsuit. But, you know, name calling on the radio is not, and he's bound and determined to bankrupt me. And he's, and he's doing a real, I mean, he's not going to bankrupt me, but he's really putting a cramp on my lifestyle. Well, you know what? It's un-American <clears throat> to try to squash somebody else's First Amendment, right? You want to talk about un-American and l- l- layer it, l- uh, weighing down the court system with nonsense? So, what you, I mean, what's your opinion on that, Michelle? On the frivolous lawsuit well, aspect I mean, of it? I mean, just like, you know, him suing me based on me calling him a midget and Mason saying that he has pubic hair <laughs> on top of his head and, you know, based on the, saying that he's a little narcissistic oompa loompa little bitch. I mean, uh, again, that, that's somewhat brash and it's somewhat in your face, but that's what we do. And, I mean, if you're a public figure, I mean, you can call me fat and make, make songs about me, as people have, and you just got to be you, – uh, you probably don't know because you're not a public figure, but you're very well versed on people that are, and you got to have thick skin when you're going to be in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the role. I think, exactly, I think, you know, he's put himself out there as a public, as a celebrity figure, local, um, but yeah, once you put yourself in that position, I think that that, that kind of comes with the, the job, that's kind of the territory. And so naturally, um, we said Unfortunately, some- in this country, you can make problems for other people. You have every right to do that, and, and I don't see that there's any legislation, laws, anything that can, um, unfortunately, that can protect you and other side from that. Our court system needs a huge douche as douche as well. And this reform tort, we need, we definitely need tort reform because the judicial system is just inundated with people like MJ that, that, that want, and these ambulance chaser type attorneys that are all looking for, you know, a lawsuit and a settlement. And, and that, that's, that's a huge problem in our country as well. Yep. Absolutely. You I know, even, and really that right. affected me even on my level. I, if I can relate a really quick story, sure. um, I have a 12 year old boy who hit another boy in our neighborhood, and my son is, um, is is very small for 12, didn't leave a mark on this child, nothing happened. The police were called, and they filed a report, and it went to the state's attorney's office. Now, the state's attorney didn't pick it up because there wasn't anything really to be done there, but he had to go to a juvenile arbitration program, which really, okay, he didn't get in a whole lot of trouble. It was a great lesson for him. It was a pain in the butt for us to have to run him all over the place, but this is one neighbor that I've had a problem with, right. and they've used our legal system just to make it inconvenient for me. And, I mean, I know it's incredibly small scale compared to well, remember the, the good, remember, hey, uh, I'm just a few years older than you are. Remember the good old days when you had two kids in the neighborhood fighting and your dad went down there and said, hey, listen, uh, other dad. I'm sorry, you know, hey, I'm going to I'm going to whip my son's ass or my daughter's ass or whatever and, you know, hey, is there anything I can do to make it up for you or we as a family are sorry about the fight? M- remember remember back yeah. in the day when that used to happen and there was the cops weren't yeah. called, there wasn't the judicial system that was bogged down and there wasn't any juvenile interdiction, nothing like that. We, yeah, we, exactly. And I didn't see these parents. These parents didn't knock on my door. There was a there was a, you know, cop knocking on my door. So, um I was absolutely incensed and, and I think it just speaks to our society as a whole. This is where we're at. This is what we've become, and and it's pretty sad. Like a police officer doesn't have anything better to do yeah. than that. Yeah, but the drug dealers. And yeah, people. and actually, he was very, really good. He was really apologetic, and he's like, "Look, I tried to talk them out of this. This doesn't normally happen, but unfortunately, I got to do my job." And I'm like, you know, I get that, and I'm not mad at you, but. Um, and if my son would have kept his hands to himself, then, you know, he wouldn't be in that position. Yeah, that kind of represents so kind of what I, uh, You know, her story kind of represents, and, and MJ Sue and me kind of represents what's happened in our country. Back in the day, man, when two countries or, you know, an inner inner civil war within a country or whatever, some Middle Easterners that want to, you know, praise Allah and be mean to women, whatever, man, back in the day, we were like, man, let them figure it out themselves. We don't need to go over there and police the world. And just like not the, just like this this situation, two kids getting a fight in a neighborhood, man, you know, the, the, the mentality back in the day is like, man, let, those, let them figure it out. It's not 
not a big deal. But now everybody wants to sue and take people to court and, and, and invade yeah, countries. Yeah, I mean, I can understand if there was an emergency room bill or if my son beat the crap out of this kid or if there was some injury, but, I mean, there was nothing there. So there was, there was no, when I got into arbitration, the first thing they said to me is, you know, you're here because they, they usually send you here for restitution. And I'm like, there's nothing here to restitute. I'm like, this doesn't even make any sense. So... Um, so he had to do, um, you know, some community service hours and write a letter of apology, whatever. But, but yeah, it was, um, it was ridiculous. And, and that's just, again, it wasn't like that when Meanwhile, I was growing up, you know. Had the mom, had the mom just called you on the phone or the dad called you on the phone, I'm sure you being the responsible parent. He would parent. have been grounded. Well, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, he would have been grounded. He would have been made to apologize. Yeah, I'm Same sure you things would have happened. Yeah, I'm sure you would have said, and, 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 the, and the mom or the opposing mom and dad would have said, hey, listen, Michelle. You know, we'd like for you to you, you and your family or you and your son to come down here and apologize and then write a letter. And I'm I'm sure that that wouldn't have been a problem. No, nope, I would have snatched that kid up and we would have been down there doing that. Oh, but you I can't never snatch kids up anymore. Can't snatch kids up anymore. You're gonna have DCF on you. <laughs> All right, Michelle. Good talking to you, baby. Thank you so much. Um, back to my original uh, stuff, and that's the MJ stuff. God, I, I've gotten subsected. Uh, I, I had the Bill Maher uh, stuff uh, queued up, ready to go. I had the uh, the Sarah Palin uh, doctrine uh, 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 queued up, ready to go, and I've I've completely got off track on my original stuff, and that's the MJ. And once I had the MJ stuff racked up, then I had uh, the new Manson bit. You are jam packed with crap. <laughs> Spice, I I know you're gonna fight me on it. I know you're gonna fight me, but I almost feel like having you make a phone call and cancel my interview today. I'm just so slammed. There's, I mean, and I got hard outs. Yeah, hard out. Let's take a show vote on the deal. I I vote for cancel. Please step up. I mean, I think it's a little, little late now. I don't. It's my show. Last time I checked. Well, if it's your show, then why are you ask it? Because I like to do things by committee nowadays, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you like to overrule the committee. <laughs> well, I had that. On. I had that right. Brand over to you. Don't lie like you do a lot. <laughs> I think Paulie's pretty good, but you, you're. <laughs> it's a, it's a tough decision because I can tell that you, you want to cancel it, but yet. Spices booked it, but it was booked under protest. <laughs> it was it wasn't booked until eight fifty last night. And he had to fight me tooth and nail on it. I'm laying in bed watching. The I don't have to race. fight you. I, I, I asked, asked you. you. I asked, asked you. you. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna throw it over to Manson. Manson, you may be the deciding vote, and don't even lie like you do a lot. Oh, that's a tough one because I was planning on going to work on a bit because I, I I hate Polly Shore. <laughs> <laughs> Spice. Yeah. No, what's your what's your <laughs> what's your opinion? First of all, I'm mad at the guy from the improv too. I, hate I know that, that. I hate that guy. That little Barney Rebel looking <laughs> bitch. I've taken such good care of him over the years. Never asked for nothing. Well, that's ever. why I called you last night and explained the situation. I understand the situation, but I also didn't realize that I was gonna be this jam packed full of stuff. I'm slammed. I mean, I could have I could do the show till noon today. Now that's gonna piss off Ned. <clears throat> Hard out, my friend. <laughs> so nobody, nobody, everybody, you guys are going to be real modern day Bubba Radio Network politicians and give me mealy mouth, non committal answers. I hate to be a waffler. I won't. What do you want? F. Polly Shore. Manson, over to you. No waffling. I want a yes or a no. Oh, man. I say yes. Keep them. Yeah. Spice your vote. Keep them. Brent. <laughs> you guys, they're laughing at me right now. Uh, gosh, you're killing me. Uh, it's all on you, Brett. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, Brett, it's all on you. Vote against your boss or screw your buddy. <laughs> you're gay now? <laughs> Don't have time. This really is a priority. Bubba loves fun. In fact, this is the Bubba Radio Network. Make sure you subscribe to Bubba Army HQ. Otherwise, Bubba will have to take action. And there's a lot of power behind those short arms. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Now back to the BRN. <laughs> For those uh, scoring at home, I canceled Polly Shore. Done deal. Cancel them. If you're a Polly Shore fan, I'm sorry. I got things. I got things. I got things to do, my friend. I remember this song. Yes, yeah, sorry, sir, that you're a Polly Shore fan. I remember this song. I was like in seventh or eighth grade. I had a lot of biodome questions I wanted to ask him. You had a lot of what? A lot. A lot of what? Biodome questions. 
What's Biodome? It was a movie he was in. Oh. A terrible movie. Encino Man. <laughs> Legendary. This brand. comes, uh, but this goes hand in hand with Manson's new bit. Uh, I'll play that after I get done reading this blog. It's from the original email that I got from a guy, I think, in Jacksonville. Very, very, very smart guy. Uh, uh, Justin uh, uh, Burnbrook. Uh, Brent, I'm going to uh, give his uh, email information. You guys can start, you know, being smart together. <laughs> He's speaking that high minded yes. talk. Uh, voter <laughs> intimidation, Todd Schnitt, 2008 style. This comes from Cyber War Fighter. It's a blog. <laughs> He's getting these people <clears throat> yeah. riled up. <laughs> In the history of the United States, voter fraud and intimidation was at many times thought to be motivated and carried out against many because of race, age, sex, and even education disadvantage. But in the current economical woes of the United States, class welfare may lead uh, to the intimidation of today. Let's take radio talk show host Todd Schnitt, afternoon host, in the Tampa market from 3 to 6. His hack, I'm sorry, this hack, God, the print is so small, this hack, an outrageous statement and possibly illegal admission during his show, September 18th, 08. You know, we should make uh, contact with his uh, personal trainer. Yep. Let's do that. Uh, sp- so here we go. This 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 is uh, Cyber War Cyber War Fighters Diary. This comes uh, from uh, look look for www.cyberwarfighter.us. That's the uh, the blog that I'm looking at here. Uh, speaking of a self speaking as a self-proclaimed non-conservative Republican, Todd Schnitt stated after observing his personal trainer's support for Barack Obama for president, "Quote, you know, if Obama win, if Obama wins and raises my taxes, I'm going to have to let you go." Now, can you be any more of an egotistical, selfish? Feels if you're like you know have this entitlement. Fine line thinking your royalty ass wipe than that statement in itself. No, I'm going to fire you because of who you vote for. <clears throat> right. And because if my taxes get raised, this guy is a multi, multi, multi millionaire. And you've said around here, you've been told- st- stealing money for years. Anyway, go ahead. You've told your employees around here, and I've heard you on and off the air tell them, I don't care who you vote for. No. I've heard you say that. Yeah. I'm going to have to let you go. As to imply, why vote for Obama, you will, um, as to imply, why vote for Obama, you will lose your job with me because I won't be able to afford you. Now, you know, if you're a guy and, and, and times are tough, you know, I know you have to scale back some personal, some personal, uh, you know, luxuries that you have, and maybe your trainer is one of them. But when you're a guy and you make millions and millions of dollars, if you want to fire your personal trainer based on, you know, you're moving on, you're changing direction, but uh, it's obviously not working for you. Don't use yeah, in it. In all fairness, it doesn't seem like his personal <laughs> trainer's very good. Well, now, now hold on now. Right. Perhaps he's using this in his excuse to get rid of him. But I mean, if you're going to fire him based on he who he who he votes for and because that person supposedly is going to raise your taxes by 5 points because you're one of the richest of the rich and the upper 5%, man, I think that's problematic on a lot of fronts. Oh, okay. totally. It's a borderline illegal. Later during the segment, he again talked uh, about the making of the same statement to a young lady uh, radio employee uh, of, of, of his he saw wearing an Obama T-shirt. Oh, so now he's threatening fellow radio people that work over there that wear Obama shirts? Let's look at uh, what he is doing. As an employee, it is your right if your employer told you, hey, if so-and-so wins, I may have to fire you. What if you uh, don't vote for my guy and he still wins? Are you going to be out on the street? Or if you uh, vote for him and he loses, but your employer has already made it known that your support for the other guy is not looked upon favorably, do you really uh, want to work for a, a dick? And it, and, a, and, a, and a, it puts a question mark. Let me be clear. An employer has the right in the state of Florida to employ whomever they want. But I also believe that snide suggestions of an employer can be destructive for both sides and may cause a relationship not to survive. I have yet to find an actual law that has been broken during Snitch show, but I have a sense uh, but I have sensed a tide in America where class warfare is brewing from its cur- uh, from this current election. The Republicans are desperately trying to hold on to every penny they make, and to them I say I don't blame you. Hold tight, we're in trouble. The rest of us are trying to make an honest living, and we also hate to see anybody taxed unfairly. 
But come on, man. I bet both of Todd Schnitt's employees are getting their resumes updated because unlike Schnitt's, uh, because unlike the Schnitt's of the world, it ain't always about the money. Hey, Mr. Schnitt, if your taxes go up, hire a better tax accountant. <laughs> he makes a good point. I mean, rich people have evaded taxes and used tax shelters for years. Yeah. Well, you know, MJ is real, real rich, man. And for him to tell his personal uh, personal trainer, if you vote for Barack Obama and he wins and my taxes go up 5%, I am not going to be able to afford you. I mean, at the end of the day, man, what does a personal, what does a personal trainer cost? Uh, meanwhile, it would be interesting on a side note to see how much he has spent uh, in suing me well into the six figures. I'm into the six figures. If I was him, I'd sue his personal trainer. Yeah, for lack of results. <laughs> <laughs> To my mom, dude. There's nothing, nothing worse. I'm, I'm eating at the Palm Restaurant last week, and I, I'm eating my food. I look up, and there's his ugly mug on the wall. That's why I refused. Like, are you got to be kidding well, me? I got to look at this Joker while I'm eating. And you're supposed to, you know, they're supposed uh. to do, they're supposed to do characters of you know local people that you know are of, of significance, and they refuse. They refuse to put mine up there. <laughs> and I've been told, I've been told that it costs like three thousand dollars. Well, you can, yeah. A lot of people put them up there because you know they, they want to believe the hype, so they'll actually pay between like, I, from what I'm hearing. Between like three and five thousand dollars to get their little uh, mug put up on the uh, the wall. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> I wonder if MJ was offered to it for free or he uh, uh, paid for it. We should almost do a Bubba boycott on the Palm. Either way, man, I had to I had to look at that while I ate there. Mm-hmm. That's on. why I refused to eat there because they got have this picture on the wall. Right, and they won't put mine on there. <laughs> then I turn around and I see Rick Baker. What the hell's going on around? Another good reason not to eat. There. Right. <laughs> Which, by the way, my guess, two. I guess the city of St. Pete is really, really coming down to my boy, Pat McGovern. That sucks, man. And so that call we got yesterday morning was... Yeah, oh yeah, it's oh, legit. No, it's man. legitimate. So, I'm, I'm going to get into that story here in a minute. Okay. Go ahead. No, go oh, ahead. I was going to say, so he's not allowed to protect the athletes no, they say that, on the field? No, they say that I guess during your t- the, 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 uh, SO, uh, the, the standard operating procedures of tasering is it's not supposed to be in the head. <laughs> See, to me, that's the only thing that will scare me. I mean, if, if you're drunk, right, you're intoxicated, you're causing a ruckus, man, you put something to somebody's head, they slow down real quick. Well, the, the argument is, one, he wasn't going to fire, and his, his trigger figure trigger was, was, was off. clearly off, and two, it was actually, you know, it was the first part of him moving, I guess there's other photos that show him moving it down towards the back of, the, like, the base of his shoulders. Right, if there that's was where, video, you could, where, you could probably see more clearly where he was sliding it down, but right. unfortunately, they took a still shot and used that one. Manson, what's your working uh, um, uh, MJ bit? Um, I thought I'd delve into a little bit of the interaction between him and his bird. Oh, Casey? Oh, Casey. Yeah, Casey. You know, I really haven't delved into that. So. The, uh, Casey the parrot. The African uh, gray. Can't only imagine what kind the, of interaction he has with that. That's at the forefront of controversy. The African gray, the state of Florida, uh, has found out that uh, MJ has been keeping this African gray at 4,002 Gandhi for well over 14 years. You know, uh, animals are not supposed to be kept in commercial businesses at all. But the uh, only human contact being MJ. Oh. So, <laughs> so you uh, what you would like, you kind of like make believing as, as to how the their two interaction goes. Yeah. Well, the Radio <laughs> Theater presents. Start and stop. First run, Willie. Hold on. An imaginary scenario with MJ Kelly, the brave little DJ who battled back after a horrible automobile accident in which his legs were amputated just below the knees <laughs> and his face was so hideously crushed and disfigured, it had to be completely reconstructed with skull fragments taken from a retarded baboon. <laughs> just, Manson, just your setups are second to none. They're getting more elaborate, too. I love it. That is so great. That's my favorite parts of the whole yeah, bit. Just the setups, because they're so outlandish. Each time, he's just getting longer and, and, and longer and more elaborate. And, and the thing I about love, it is... I love it. You can love the voice, too. He's going to sue me for it. But not realizing that they're so outlandish that there's no way an, a person would believe that. But the best part, the best part is once he puts it in writing, we're gonna have to look at it and yeah. read it back in writing where it says, uh, M- "You claim that MJ has skull fragments from a returned baboon." <laughs> I want to see Channel 13, you know, see see the tort claim and say, you know, uh, on 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 September uh, 19th, Friday, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Clem and his cohorts. Said that he had skull fracture, that he had been in a horrible wreck, and he was, <laughs> legs had been amputated from the knee on down, and his face was so disfigured that he had to have skull fragments of a of a baboon skull, a retarded baboon, 
But still- Cut, cut, no, there was no auto accident. What do you mean? MJ Kelly's never been in an automobile accident. You mean he looks like that <laughs> normally? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and he was born that short. Yeah, five foot three, five foot four, something like that. <laughs> so well. As disturbing as that may be. Mason, I love your, almost your Thurston Hatley the Third fine line English royalty voice. Love it. Thank you. On with the sea. <laughs> ah, another unbelievable, ah, amazing, over the top, stupendous show overflowing with astounding entertainment that only I, MJ Kelly, can deliver. Ah. Clean my cage. Uh, not now, Casey. Uh, leave me alone. C can't you see I'm basking in my fantasticness? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you got Casey talking? <laughs> basking in my fantasticness. Clean my cage. While you sit there, bored and all alone in your cage, literally jam-packed full of bird crap. Clean my cage. <laughs> By the way, man. Uh, I, I'm sure after this broadcast, things will change because he listens to every second of our show <laughs> and transcribes it and then files various interrogatories to pay stuff. But I'm sure that he that, that yeah, an intern is cleaning that cage as we speak because he thinks he's going to get in trouble for the filth. But do you guys remember, man, when we worked over there, how filthy his office, not just from the oh. bird shiz and all that kind of stuff, but just the newspapers because he needs newspapers to put in the bottom of the cage when they do clean it and the piles and piles of just filth that used to be in his office. It was a pigsty. Yeah. It really was. He he is slob. The, he is the most uncleanly rich affluent person that I know. Definitely. I mean that office I can only imagine what his house looks like. How that was allowed to go on and how that's allowed to be that filthy, I have no idea. But you, just pipe down, Casey. I have to get ready for the schnitt show. Schnitt show shocks. <laughs> oh, shucks. Uh, Casey, I'm warning you. Huh? Snitch a hack. Sean Hannity wannabe. Casey, stop it. <laughs> You're a hack. Sean Hannity wannabe. Oh. It's my huh? snitch a hack. Uh, uh, that's it. Uh. That's exactly how you would be, too. <laughs> I'm covering your cage, huh? thus putting you in total darkness and denying you the privilege of looking at me in all my infinite, magnificent, incredibleness. Huh? Casey's hungry. No. Oh. Huh? Casey's hungry. Uh, no. For Pete's sake, I hear, here, here's some of Fester's Tony Fatso's barbecue <laughs> sauce. <laughs> now pipe down. Huh? Make love to me, Joey B. Ah, make love to me, Joey B. Are you insinuating there maybe some, some, uh, some kind of... Poor Joey B. He doesn't want to be there. No, he's one of the good guys over there. Man. The last person that wants to be in that building is Joey B. Actually, I feel sorry for three people. Joey B. Hurricane. F Fester and Hurricane. And I feel about Froggy. I don't know the new Froggy. I, I, I like Froggy. I feel for him. What? Ah, MJ's too tiny. Ah. Casey, where did you hear this? Ah, do me dirty. Pull my hair. Ah. MJ's too tiny. Ah. Do me dirty. Ah. Well, that's, that's, quite, that's, quite a, that's quite an allegation. Uh, this is so bizarre. I mean, uh, fortunately, this is an imaginary scenario. Otherwise, I would be forced to believe that my wife was cheating on me behind my back because I'm a uh, loudmouth blowhard. He's doing the snitch show. He's doing the snitch show. <laughs> so are you insinuating... <laughs> It took me a second to understand what yeah. was going on. Yeah. Right. It's complex. Now it's all straight. It's a complex it's plot. Really, you got to yeah. follow yeah. along. Yeah. It's, 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 a complex. it's all straight. Here's, <laughs> here's, here, now, let's, this is parody, obviously, and it's make-believe. And we're actually, you know, doing parody on a personal, uh, I'm sorry, a, 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 a public figurine here in Tampa. <laughs> but I think that, uh, I think what we're getting at here, and I'm really not a, a very smart man, <laughs> but I think that uh, Casey, the bird, has been privy to some, uh, some hanky-panky <laughs> Uh, in the office and has watched uh, oh, some various, various hanky panky in the office while uh, and whomever somebody is reassuring the other person that uh, MJ is on the air or the schnitt show is on the air and there's no way you could get caught and there's another individual perhaps taking advantage of the situation right another individual possibly that's uh, allegedly I, yeah is that are we allegedly possibly there's many layers to this bit, and you've peeled some of them away now. Many layers. Oh, there's more layers. Hold on. There's many layers of this parody and and, and obvious hyperbole. Correct. Exactly. Right. Ah, he'll never find out. Casey, ah. please. I'm trying to work. Ah. Whip out the gimmick. Whip out the gimmick. There's a deal. Ah. Uh, has Fester been listening to Bubba in my office again? Ah. Screw the midget. 
Bubba Army. Bubba Army. Oh, God, you don't think there's going to be an emergency <laughs> meeting? He's so obsessed with us. There's going to be an emergency meeting on this. He's actually going to interview Casey. <laughs> MJ's actually going to strong arm Casey today. Strong wing. He's going to strong wing. <clears throat> He's going to strong wing. He's going to depose Casey. <laughs> oh, that's it. Someone call my lawyer, Phil Campbell. Screw the magic. I'm suing my own bird. <laughs> Can you imagine that bird can't even hang himself? Can you imagine? Hold on. Can you imagine if that bird could really talk? Oh, my God. T- talk about animal cruelty. Hey, when I'm being sued, I am going to depose Casey. <laughs> Casey, I'm going to bring a bird expert. Maybe we can get some good information out of Casey. Oh, that was great. I got to I gotta play that Manson and, and, uh, without, without, and without interruption before we leave today. Oh, man, that's awesome. What's up with this, uh, with this Josh Howard stuff? Is he played for the Mavericks, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he made a derogatory comment at a uh, summer flag football game, and they caught it on video, and now he's catching some flack for it. A derogatory comment? What do you mean? He was at a- Against the, uh, the national anthem. Here's the story, yeah. and I have a... Uh, uh, Dallas Mavericks, Josh Howard disrespects the national anthem. Josh Howard's decision making. Is he a very good ball player, Brent? Yeah. Real good. Pretty good. I'd say, uh, yeah, he's pretty good. Josh Howard's decision making uh, has again come into question after he was filmed disrespecting the national anthem, and the Mavericks are taking steps to help Howard and their, and their players avoid controversy in the future. Uh, in the video posted on YouTube, the swingman uh, is shown at, at Allen Iverson's charity flag football game in July. When the national anthem is being sung, various participants are shown mugging for the camera. When the camera gets to Howard, he says, "Star Spangled Banner." Uh, the Star Spangled Banner is going on, and I don't celebrate this shiz. I'm black. What black has to do with it? Howard goes. Really sure. <laughs> Howard goes on to make considering this country is the one that helped you make the money. Howard is. Uh, mm, Howard goes yeah. on to uh, make a difficult to discern comment that. Uh, uh, includes a, a reference to the Democratic presidential candidate, candidate Barack Obama. The video, the <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the video comes on the heels of his July arrest for a late night uh, street race in North Carolina, oops. and last season's oops, and, and last season's admission that he occasionally used marijuana. Oops, oh, yeah. He also had a birthday bash for himself <laughs> at a, at a, at a, uh, after the Mavericks lost Game Four. <laughs> Of their playoff series against New Orleans. <laughs> right after the loss, he's going, oh, happy birthday to me. Even though the uh, coach, uh, Avery I- uh, Johnson, asked the players to keep extracurricular activities to a minimum <laughs> during the playoffs, especially after defeat. Screw you, coach. I'm, you look how I short got, you are. It's my birthday, dog. It's my birthday, man. <laughs> Fit to go celebrate. Owner Mark Cuban said the Mavericks dealt with Howard's flag football episode after it happened in July. Here it is. Hold on. Nigga, That's how it is. He said F Obama and all that S. F Obama and I don't celebrate the the Star Spangled Banner because I'm black and F Obama and all that S. Yes. Nigga low that Star Spangled Banner going on right now. I don't even celebrate that but I'm black. Goddamn Obama. Obama all that it's amazing. I don't celebrate that stuff because I'm black. I don't think he says F Obama in there. No, the one dude goes Obama 08, and yeah. then he goes F Obama and all that S. Wow. It's pretty strong words. <laughs> yeah, boy, this country is Good so bad. Good thing I don't take my political knowledge from uh, from him. <laughs> this uh, this country is just, uh, you know, really horrible in the fact that you make about $12 million a year playing basketball. <laughs> right. Go do that in, you know, where, you know, where your native country. Yeah, find where, find another country where you can make yeah. $12 million. Well, go yeah. back Go back to where you came from, yes, wherever yeah, that may and, be. Angola does every year in the Olympics. <laughs> Not too good. Go back to Niger or whatever, you know, where, wherever you're from and, 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 you know, see what kind of living you can make over there. I don't, I don't know where you're from, so where your ancestors. Let's trace your ancestry, find out where you're from, and let's see if you can go make that living over here. Our country's great. Yeah, and if you can, hey, make- even even though our country needs a a big douche right now, <clears throat> we're still better from you know better than anybody else. Yeah, I mean, I'm you know I'm the most cynical person out there, and you know have so many problems with our government and our, the way our country is run. But you know, I definitely respect the anthem and everything about that. You Absolutely, know. absolutely, man. I in fact. I, I got a little bit of heat. Uh, uh, we were at the quarter midget track a couple uh, s- Sundays ago at the Tampa quarter midget track, and the, they were doing the national anthem, pl- playing the national anthem, and there was these kids. Everybody was standing there, and I, I told Tyler to take his hat off. He had a hat on. I said, take your hat off and put your hand on your chest, and he did. And Tyler and I were sitting there. Tyler was very well behaved. But like four or five of little Tyler's buddies 
all over there grab assing around and they're taking they got this football and they're throwing it and I said, Hey, stop and pay attention. You're not my daddy. <laughs> no, they didn't say that, but one of the parents made a comment that I was a, a rude to their to their son. <sighs> well, then you know where they get it. And and I, and, you know what? Good and, point. And, you know, and I was like, I said, you know, I wasn't rude to anybody. I told them to stop messing around uh, during the national anthem. Now, I mean, was it wrong for me? And I mean, I, it's exactly how I said, hey, stop yeah. and pay attention. <clears throat> that's exactly what I, I said. I like that. I like that you did that. Now, Absolutely. Is, but, you know, I mean, that's, that's you know, is it not my responsibility as an adult? First of all, man, I think the biggest problem we have is the fact that kids no longer respect adults. And if you're not your if you're not the adult in question, meaning if it's not your kid, you're not supposed to say anything, and you're not supposed to correct kids. Yep. Bullshit, man. I would have got my if, if I would have talked back to uh, <laughs> another parent back in the day or done something. My dad, oh my god, my dad would have lit that fat ass up <clears throat> and had fun doing it. And if I surely would have been messing around during the national anthem, my dad would have well, whooped my. My my if 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 report got back to my dad that I was doing that and the and the parent had to redirect me. The last thing on my father's mind would have been, I'm going to go have a word with that parent. And not to, my dad would have said, thank you, sir. And now I'm going to go whip Bubba Clem's ass. <laughs> thank you. Yep. That's what my dad would have and said. And he too. would have said, don't you ever let me catch. Don't you. <laughs> yeah, good call. Better dump that. Uh, I don't know what my dad would have said. He was, wasn't really around. My dad was a Marine during the Korean War, so he would have never way to bring the that. Way to bring the party down. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into the Bill Maher stuff here. By the God, phone, I probably should get to some phone calls. These phone we're calls. We're running late. Yeah, we're running way late. We're running, but I got Ziggy on the phone. Ziggy's very long-winded, but I got to get I got to get a Ziggy update. We are running late, but I will, I'll get back up to speed. Ziggy, how are you, buddy? Good. How you doing? You got an update on me, buddy? No, I was just calling in on that parody, man. That thing was classic. Was that funny or what? Oh, I'm telling you, man. By, by, the, end of the, by the end of the show, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run it uh, without uh, interrupting it. Oh, that's going to be great. I'm sure I'll be getting some interrogatories off of it too. Let me, let me ask you a question, man. Are you are you as are you as bummed out over this situation uh, as as I think you are? Yeah, I am. I can tell. I can tell you've lost a little pep in your step on the deal. Oh no, no. I mean, now it's 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 not that I've lost pep in my step. It's just I got to watch what I say and how I say it, and so I can't be myself when it comes to that end of it. But now I'm actually um, infuriated because of what's going on. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm furious because you know it doesn't need to happen. Yeah. At all. I mean, have you talked to your Have you talked to your guy at the state of Florida? Yeah, I spoke to him during the week. And what? Yeah, and, I spoke uh, to him. Uh, and what do you say, buddy? Same thing. You know, they're they're just as aggravated as I am over it. You know, they just want it over and done with and move on to the next you know thing that they have to worry about. And you know, the, it just doesn't necessarily have to go down the way it's going down. You know, he's putting all this on. <laughs> Himself and everybody else. So I mean, as the state of Florida, the, your your representative from the Florida Fish and Wildlife, do they think that he's being a little sniveling bitch? And you know, it's it's it's, it's amazing how uh, you know we have plenty of evidence. I mean, you know, I worked there for you know t- 10, 10, 10 or so of those years with him. We have plenty of evidence. The bird is there. I mean, you know, it, the guy is guilty. And just because he's got a ton of money, man, he can manipulate the system. Wouldn't it be refreshing, the man, if somebody said, you know what, my bad, you're right. It, it's but yeah, it would be. Just say, you know what, I, I screwed up, you know, whether, you know, what, what, how do we do to get this corrected? Do you want me to take him out? Do you want to take him? Do you want to put him in a new home? Do you, you know, but no, he's not doing it that way. He's not manning up and doing it the right way at all. Well, Ziggy, man, I really, pre- I, you know, I appreciate, and, and, what, and what MJ is trying to make this is, trying to make this a Bubba versus MJ uh, deal, uh, feud, and it's not. This is a, a bird, an African, a lovely African gray has been housed in a, in a, in a commercial uh, atmosphere for 14 years it's just not healthy for the bird it has nothing to do with a radio war i am the only guy that had the balls to expose it but i'm the spokesperson for i guess if the bird could have a spokesperson for one the bird two the animal rights people and three the hundreds and hundreds of employ- employees that have worked over there over the years that are disgusted by having to have bird dander and bird bird poop on their way to the to the bathroom or the cafeteria right I agree with it. But, you know, no, no he, he wants to make it a conspiracy theory because, you know, everything's about him and he's never wrong. Mm-hmm. No, I agree with that 100%. You know, and when he went, you know, he crossed the lines with that with me on the, you know, with the. 
So what you, so what you do, that, Brady, you know? he sues me then for the name calling, and then he sues the guy, Ziggy, who is a professional bird rescuer. He just rescued 50-some birds out of New Orleans. That's what he does. He rescues abused or abandoned or neglected birds. That's what he does. And then MJ now sues him because God forbid that you go against MJ. I just find that I find that just absolutely absurd. I, I do, too. And I find it. I find, I, it I, find, I find it more absurd that Clear Channel and their new owners would allow this to happen. That's what I'm saying. Why well, would you allow this in your building? I, I don't get it. Spice I me. Mean, how hard would it be for Dan to about to say, "Listen, you know what? Get, the bird goes. The bird goes. Read my lips. The bird goes." Well, it would be, it would be very tough because of the fact that MJ runs the building. If the I was bird goes, the I go. Thing. I think he's got more clout over there than the upper management. And yeah, De Loretto's such a poon that he, he won't do anything. Well, you, you know what? Me? I had higher ratings than him, and I thought that I was pretty important as well. And they said, you know what? See you later there, fat ass. <laughs> uh, you know, I well, mean, that cost him. It, well, it did cost him. Look at it. <laughs> but, I mean, where's MJ going to go? He ain't going to go anywhere in Cox. Nope. He ain't going to go anywhere in CBS. Nope. Where's he going to go here in this town? Nowhere. We would be rid of him. And the, you know what? The station's ratings would probably go up. But it just shows you how much of a, the, the management over there, this guy, MJ, the morning show guy, on a top 40 teeny bopper radio station, runs the show to the point of even doing illegal stuff uh, as deemed by the state of Florida, and they still continue to allow it to happen. I don't understand. Anyway, Zig, lawyers, man, I'll, I'll let lawyers. you. Uh, I will talk to you privately, my friend, and thank you so much for, 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 for all this. No problem. Give me a call over the weekend or something. Thank you. Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hey, how are you doing? Kathy from Dunedin. I'm doing great, baby. How are you? Great. Hey, I just had a question. How do we know that's not MJ's cage and uh, Casey the Bird's just a beard? What's that now? <laughs> how do we know that's not MJ's cage itself and then Casey's just a beard? He could fit in his cage, I'm, <clears throat> I'm sure. That's what I'm saying. Thank you, Kathy, Anyhow, so very much. Anyhow, and all of you guys, we want to say I adore you. Bubba, I used to hate your guts. I couldn't stand to listen to you. I had to turn you off in a second. I heard your voice. I have seen the light. You've come back, and um, I have really appreciated your thoughtful radio. Um, I love your views. I love to hear different views. Um, I have flipped over to MJ a couple times in between your very long commercials. Um, he's so inane. No Brittany, compelling Lindsay radio Lowen, whatsoever. What, 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 TMZ, um, TMZ. What, 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 Lindsay Lowen, Brittany. What, 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 how TMZ, Lindsay Lowen, Brittany. What, 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 how, what, is that what you heard? Exactly. Well, actually, the last thing, the last time I flipped over, I heard they were talking about this big stunt. They contacted the vice president of Rooms to Go because so and so's sofa was uncomfortable. And the big stunt was they were going to actually light the sofa on fire in the parking lot. Dun, and dun, I'm like, what? Dun. Dun. <laughs> craziness. Right? Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, man, when you need a no, song. That's, that's song hard, about a couch. That's yeah, anyhow, I just want to know. I, you, you guys know I really appreciate what you guys do. Thank you, Kathy, so very much, honey. Thank you so much. They ripped that bit off from the West Virginia Mountaineers. Running late, man. Plus, I think Yaya's is real close to being here, man. I'm so happy for that. That makes Fridays all worthwhile. I didn't go to bed till one o'clock last night. I could, Ooh. I could not sleep. That mad about the race, huh? I was. You know what? The, the, you know what? The race. <laughs> Dan Wheeler made you not sleep Can I tell last you something night. Right you know what, Brent? I, I would not have admitted this had you not brought it up. In fact, my wife got up at one o'clock. She goes, "Honey, what's wrong?" I was like, oh, "I just can't sleep." I, di- I didn't have the balls to tell her it's because the effing rays blew it. <laughs> oh my god! I was. It ruined my night. It ruined, it ruined, it ruined my night, Spice. It's ruined. Now, if you'll excuse me. This is the Bubba Radio Network. Make sure you subscribe to Bubba Army HQ. Otherwise, Bubba will have to take action. And there's a lot of power behind those short arms. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Now back to the BRN. Uh, let me read an email. This is uh, sent to me. Also, don't forget, uh, it's uh, there's a golf tournament going on October 24th. Also, a soccer game at the Lakeland Christian Center to benefit the the Rimmer, the Reamer kids. Rimmer, yep. Rimmer kids. Any information that you need need regard with regarding uh, the various charities that are going on for these for these kids, you can go to uh, heathershope.net. www.heathershope.net. That's the teacher that was killed in front of her two kids by their dad, and then he turned the gun on himself. It's just really a sad deal. Uh, and these uh, these poor little girls really, really, really need our help as a community. Uh, we uh, we help all, t- all sorts of different people. Well, this is one that we need to roll our sleeves up and 
uh, and help. Now, Brent, uh, I, I want to get into Bill Maher. This is a week ago. This is last Friday on HBO. Yep. And uh, he's talking about uh, the. Now, please don't think that I'm trying to be anti anybody. I'm simply just, you know, re- playing the audio of another uh, opinionated talk show guy. Yep. Very funny comedian. <clears throat> yes, very comedian. Well, yeah, not only a comedian, but I mean, he wears all types of different. He's an author. He's, 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 he's got just, a movie. He, he just made a movie that's coming out. Yep, religious. I saw the trailer for it. It's hilarious. It's going to be the guy's very talented. Whether you like, a lot of people think he's smug, which I I, I get that he is. He's yeah. smug, but he's smugly talented. Yeah, he's <laughs> very talented. And you know what? When he was on our show, he was pretty nice to us. Uh, Lummox uh, did some great work for us, man. May have scored uh, Matt Grothy. Yep, the quarterback for the USF Bulls, the thirteenth or fourteenth or twelfth ranked USF Bulls. Twelve and sixteen are their rankings. Yeah, and you look at their schedule; they could easily go undefeated. They could, and I I say that they're going to win the Big East. Well, Kansas was. They're one big one. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was Kansas, and now we got well, West. We got West Virginia. West Virginia, but West Virginia, you know, they're got here. How did they do last night? It was 14-14 when I turned the game off. And I think that uh, do we have UConn in Florida? Uh, no, no Florida. No, UConn's the big stumbling no, no, block. No, no. Do we have UConn? UConn comes here. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. UConn comes here. What's that, Manson? I'm sorry. I said that's probably the b- biggest game we have because you know UConn and Rutgers and is we down. always Rutgers and we always way down. We always trip up against UConn. But anyway, make a long story short, if they play like they did against Kansas, man. Uh, so we got Matt, Matt Grothy coming in soon, and maybe we can get uh, Mike Simmons, better known as Haas, the offensive line coach, in here uh, as well as uh, USF continues to uh, do well. And I've heard that the uh, All-American defensive end, George Selvey, uh, also listens to uh, our show and wants to do it. So so great. Congratulations to those boys. They're, they're really a good football team. Also, don't forget FYE. You can go to your local FYE and uh, grab the new Bubble Raw 1 DVD. Any, any FYE, man, they got it. Uh, Bubba Raw two coming out soon. Now, so anyway, Bill Maher did a whole big thing, and again, uh, for all you for all you guys, you know, you're, you you ultra conservatives that think that I'm being anti, I'm not. And Bill Maher's a libertarian, by the way. No, I'm not. I'm just simply playing Bill Maher's comments. I find some of this stuff interesting. Uh, now, now, pa- uh, Palin was asked about the Bush Doctrine, you, you know, and and what the Bush Doctrine stands for. Bill Bill Maher talks about that. His, the first thing that I have, the first piece that I have is Bill Maher's comments on Sarah Palin's uh, Bush Doctrine stance. So I need to play that first from Charlie from Charles Gibson. Yep. And he's not exactly the, the toughest interview. <laughs> no. So no. I, no do find, I do find this disturbing that this woman does not know what the Bush Doctrine is. Yeah, but I, listen to her spin on this. This is great. She, she attempts to spin it back, and Charles, with his little Santa Claus glasses on, looks at her like, well, no. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I got a I got a, I got a late breaking call. Steve Tampa, hi. Bubba, what's going on, man? What's going on, buddy? Hey, uh, hey, I got a little Linda Hogan Iggy for you. I was uh, was running some errands the other day. I was at the bank and uh, I see this this Mercedes roll up, and it's clearly, <laughs> I, and no doubt about, it, I could see from her clown face it was Linda Hogan. Orange makeup. And uh, I see this this car behind her. Kind of looks like a little punk with some blonde hair, and I'm thinking that must be Charlie Tuna. So I, I kind of keep an eye on him, and they pull up to the bank, and I watch Linda Hogan roll up to the ATM, pull out a, a large sum of cash, go back up to uh, Charlie Tuna's car, hand him the cash, give him a little smooch, and they uh, and then and the tuna drives hey, off. Hey, let me put you on hold. I'd like to find out the bank information. Uh, th- th- where that was, and um, also find out the day and the approximate time. And Brent, I may be able to get that uh, bank. You know, banks have like nine thousand six hundred fourteen cameras. <laughs> I'd like to pull that video footage. Absolutely, could, could, subpoena could, it. Could you do that for me, buddy? Sure. Let, let me put you on hold. Line one, guys, get that data asap. Because you know Linda claims, and I, I'm going to court on uh, October first. While I'm being deposed, Linda claims that they're just friends, and there's nothing. You know, there's nothing between them. Meanwhile, you know it's it's you know it's Hogan's money that's you know basically supporting her. He gives her forty some thousand a month tax free, and you know she's giving it to Charlie. I got a problem with that, to be honest with you. Oh, who wouldn't? So, so anyway, spikes back to the uh, Sarah Palin trying to uh, spin spin what the Bush doctrine is. Now, hey, I am not a smart man, but if if somebody said, hey, you know what's the Bush doctrine? I said, well, you know, probably Bush doctrine would be fight freedom. Terror, scaring people, right? That's his mo. <laughs> that's pretty much that simple, man. I mean, I mean, you know, I, I, that's what I would say. I, you know, I, Just I would look say, at the last eight years. You'd say, okay, he, he he sends troops in. Yeah, I'm gonna say he likes to. You know, he, we've we obviously have been in a war almost every day since he's been in office. Less one. Uh, he's really, really, uh, he's really, really big on freedom. 
He's really, really big on uh, on terror. Got to fight him over there. And he's big on Al-Qaeda. I mean, I think that that, that would be a, a, a decent answer, would it not? Sure. He thinks Iraq is the central front in the war on terror. I mean, there's, those he, are all good and, answers. And he thinks that we have to fight him over there, so we don't got to fight him over here. We've been attacked. You've got it. All right, there you go. Move on. Here's Charles. Charles Clem's got it. Here's, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not making fun of Sarah Palin. If she may be your candidate, you may like her. So let me, just give, let me just arm you with this. This is Charles Gibson from ABC in the interview. That has not yet been released, has it? No, it's, it's, it's been released, right. yeah. Do you agree with the Bush doctrine? Hold on. So it's bad quality, <laughs> but anyway. Do you agree with the Bush doctrine? So you've got to kind of know what the Bush doctrine is, right? What his template is. What is M.O.? What he likes to do. Do you agree with the Bush doctrine? In what respect, Charlie? (laughs) In what respect, Charlie? In what respect, Charlie? Bush what do you do you even see <laughs> she almost she almost got him it was but a good try it was, it was a good try <laughs> and then charles goes wait a second she's not getting me now hold on do you think that she even is familiar with what that means no. like what a person's doctorate means no because Meaning like you know you know when you when you're when you're god i'm stupid when somebody's but when somebody says hey tell me what the brent hatley doctrine is i'd be like well brent hatley is really big on personal freedoms uh brent hatley is really big on uh, the legalization of marijuana uh brent uh, brent hatley is a true libertarian to the sense to, to the utmost letter uh brent hatley loves the florida gators uh if a florida gator committed murder brent would help hide the body uh <clears throat> i mean true or false true you got that's it. what your doctrine is absolutely so your doctrine is what you stand for do you think that there's a chance, and I'm not that she doesn't even know what that means. There's a chance. It's obvious. It's Spice? painfully obvious. Well, yeah. Listen to the rest of the audio. You understand? Right, I'll shut up. Do you agree with the Bush doctrine? In what respect, Charlie? <laughs> the Bush. Well, what do you What do you interpret it to be? <laughs> His worldview. No, the Bush doctrine enunciated <laughs> September 2002, before the Iraq War. I believe that what President Bush has attempted to do is rid this world of Islamic extremism, terrorists who are hell-bent on destroying our nation. There have been blunders along the way, though. There have been mistakes made. And with new leadership, and that's the beauty of American elections, of course, and democracy, is with new leadership comes opportunity to do things better. The Bush doctrine, as I understand it, is that we have the right of anticipatory self-defense. So she didn't even, uh, she didn't even answer it. <laughs> no, she has uh, no idea. Hold on, hold on. Defense. That we have the right to a preemptive strike against any other country that we think is going to attack us. Do you agree with that? Charlie, if there is legitimate and enough intelligence that tells us that a strike is imminent against American people, we have every right to defend our country. Do we have the right to be making cross-border attacks into Pakistan from Afghanistan with or without the approval of the Pakistani government? As for our right to invade, we're going to work with these countries, building new relations. She didn't answer the question. <laughs> she, she did not answer the question. I mean, it's a Can practical I ask you a question. I, again, I'm, I'm getting on the fine line of making fun of this gal, but I mean, uh, hey, does is she not? Is, it seems to me that she's programmed like literally an effing robot. Yep. Ships working with existing allies, but forging new also, in order to Charlie get to a point, Charlie. point in this world. Where war is not going to be a first option. In fact, war has got to be, and military strike, a last option. But, Governor, I'm asking you, we have the right, in your mind, to go across the border, with or without the approval of the Pakistani government? In order to stop Islamic extremists, those terrorists who would seek to destroy America and our allies, we must do whatever it takes, and we must not blink, Charlie, in making those tough decisions of where we go and even who we target. And let me finish with this. I'm, I'm just... Can I, can, let me ask you a question. Are we living like in 1957? <laughs> I don't know. She man. does sound like a robot. Because ask, ask me that same question. Do we do we have the right, Brett? Do we have the right to invade Pakistan or across Pakistani uh, lines uh, or state lines or country lines? I should say without the approval of their government. Absolutely, we do because Waziristan is an ungoverned area of Pakistan. That's what that's who's harboring Al Qaeda. So absolutely, we have the right to go in there and get the people that attacked us on September 11th. And Brent Hatley, what do you feel about? the Bush Doctrine. I think it is a big, huge blunder. I think going into Iraq was a big mistake. I think we should have put the 150,000 troops in Afghanistan and turned over every camel and every tent till we found bin Laden. And how do you interpret it? I mean, what does the Bush Doctrine mean to you? It means we can make a preemptive strike against a country that has never attacked us uh, because we think, and our intelligence tells us, that they may want to attack us. Although the Bush Doctrine is going on faulty intelligence that only suits his predetermined outcome.
I get lost in a blizzard of words there. And you're smart. <laughs> Is that a yes that you think we have the right to go across the border, with or without the approval of the Pakistani government, to go uh, after terrorists who are in the Waziristan area? Now, hold on. This is Charlie Softball Gibson. Can you imagine when she... Now, hey, I'm just asking you guys to forward think here. When she goes against Joe Biden? <laughs> I mean, a man, a very, very gristled, and j- he's rangy, like Ned would say. Very rangy senator. Six-term senator. Six-term senator that's got a ton of... Uh, of of, of you know foreign yeah. policy experience. foreign policy experience you know Joe, Joe, Joe Biden he's salty Ned I believe that America has to exercise all options in order to stop the terrorists who are hell-bent on destroying America and our allies we have got to have all options out there on the table uh, I am going to play uh, three clips of Bill Maher I'm then gonna go to words and then I'd like for you to stick around please and give me your thoughts on this. I'm not going to give you mine. I'd like to hear yours based on her interview with Charles Gibson, uh, based on what I what I perceive just to be a, a, just an absolute buffoon. And I, we are so enamored with this woman based on looks and based on being a female. we got to get the right person in there. And maybe it's not the other guys. I don't know. <clears throat> I just want to get your opinions. I know you've heard mine. I need to shut up. And let you express yours. Here's the first. Uh, here's the first cut of Bill Maher. Of course, he's not. Gonna, he's going to probably end up pissing you off. Do you agree with the Bush doctrine? In what respect, Charlie? I can't wait. I haven't even heard this. <laughs> but Bill's the best. already. <laughs> <laughs> Bill's the. I mean, you guys went and saw him live, and nobody can work a crowd better. Just the when he hesitates, when he pauses, his facial expressions, his body mm. language. Manson, he's the best. <laughs> oh, is he he's not? He's great. I don't want to say she was a deer caught in the headlights, but her husband came in and shot her. (laughs) And you know what, man? Let's together, let's together, regardless of what part, let's make fun of ourselves, man. Let's make, I mean, you know, that's what we do here on our show. That's what you probably do at work. You guys all make fun of yourself. That's what men do. Yeah, you know, they, I was listening to s- something on the news. They say, you know, they're talking about the late night comedians are not making as much fun of Obama as they are McCain. And, you know, it's making a big deal like it's a political thing. It's like, well, you know, that's what I do for a living as I parody things. Right. And I, you know, I, I would go for be, the joke. I would go for Obama in the election probably over McCain. But if I could make fun of Obama and you know, I don't care because that's no. my job and I got, I want to be funny and I want to make good bits. Right. But the material just isn't there right now. But McCain is just such easy pickings. I'm oh. sorry, I have to go where my bread and butter is. And you Sarah, killed Bill Clinton. And, and you Sarah, killed Bill Clinton. I, Bill Clinton oh, yeah. was the, the god of parody. I killed him with hundreds of bits. So yeah, can we all at least, you know, let even if you want to vote for whomever, man, can we all at least agree, man? This is funny, man. It is. It's fun. It's this. This is laughable. This, this just is as inter- Bush is funny. Bush yeah. is hilarious. Bush, yeah. I mean, hey, he's the president, but man, he's he's a he's a walking, stumbling, you know. Yeah. Sound fun, but fun samba. Hold on. Comedy doesn't lie. Yeah, that's right. Knew what show she was on when he asked her that question. She said, "Can I use one of my lifelines?" I. <laughs> She thought the Bush Doctrine had something to do with forbidding her daughters to shave down there. (laughs) Hey, man, and you can be voting for this ticket, but this is funny now. Work with me, man. Come on. Honestly, I can think of only one other person. And I'm going to tell you now, man, if, if Bill Maher would come out with, with Obama jokes and Bill and, and Joe Biden jokes and, and Bob Barr jokes, I'd be playing them, too. You know that. As as please, funny. please know that about me. Man, you've got to know that about us. At the upper levels of government who does not know what the Bush doctrine is. Bush. <laughs> Qualified to be vice president. She's not qualified to be the mayor of Wasilla. This is a category five moron we have on our hands. <laughs> I am unapologetic about saying that. And, uh, and final cut. Final now cut. This, now this year, let me set this up for you. It's, uh, it's, it's Palin's uh, comments about Israel. Well, uh, here's, here's uh, what he's talking about. He's talking to John Fund, who's a Wall Street Journal columnist. And John Fund is up there just being as smug as he can possibly be. And his only retort to any point that, <laughs> that Bill Maher is making is, keep it up, Bill, and the Republicans will win the election. There's no uh, anything other than that. She's sending her son. You know, she's... And, it's, and who's that? That's Janine Garofalo. Okay. Seeing her son off 
off to a it's, preemptive war. And have, she also conflated Iraq with 9-11. You cannot yeah. have looked at that interview and, and thought this was someone who was doing anything but cramming for a test. They, she was asked about Israel at one point. She said the same rote answer three times. She kept saying, we can't second guess Israel. We can't second guess Israel. We can't second guess Israel. That's what they told her to say. That's all she could remember. You, That's what Joe Biden says, you except know what? he's at this much greater length. But it's so cynical. You know, David Brooks in the New York Times said that I was a snob because I called her a stewardess. She is a stewardess. I'm sorry. I know stewardesses who know the Bush doctrine. Keep it uh, up, Bill. Okay, all right. Keep but, it up. Again, it's a different issue. But you know what? To me, what's worse than a snob, and maybe I am, is a cynic. And a real cynic is somebody like you, like David Brooks, who knows better, but knows that the stupid people don't. They know what the dumb people don't, but they know that somebody like that can get over she on the dumb people. She was smart enough to take on the media. You know better. She was you know better. There you have it. <laughs> Thought I'd chat it with you today. He was madder last week than I've ever seen him on his show. We got uh, Yaya's here. Oh, yeah. And we, also, and we also have an update on the uh, the whole Buffalo Wild Wings situation that went down with Mike Tidwell. Yes, we do. I'm going to do that at 9 o'clock hour. All right. And we got the Polly Shore Spice Boy confrontation <laughs> oh. that happened in the parking lot about 15, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Polly so just texted me, too. What did he say? He, He's not mad at me, is he? Bro, I, 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 bro. He, said, he, said, he, he says he understands. He's, he's got it. Paulie, man, I love you. I'll do anything for you privately, just not when you're going to work for that ass wipe. Please, Paulie, do not hold this against me. I really, really, I've been your friend for 10 years, my friend. Talking, Remember, remember we were ta- used to have stories about the guy who owned Bumblebee, Tuna, and all. all I mean, you got so many good stories, my friend. Let's, let's keep those stories going uh, on a different time. But I just, Gary's an ass wipe, period. Uh, my, boy, my boy Neil from uh, ClipsForSale.com, Clips the number 4 sale.com, catered in Yaya's today, and we're fixing to go get after it. Reversal. Reversal. You know, I, I think there's been some kind of mistake. You just witnessed a classic example of... I'm not the smartest guy in the world. Reversal. Reversal. That's what I thought. This is the Bubba Radio Network. Do you want to hear all the times Hulk Hogan or Tucker Carlson called in? We have it all for you on BubbaArmyHQ.com. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Uh, here's, uh, I, I have not heard it. Uh, was Does Madden, uh, J- Joe Madden, that is, the manager of the race, does he ever get pissed off? Does he ever flip out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> is this one a little bit tougher to forget? Nope. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, nobody's perfect, and... Uh, you just try to put people in the, into position to be successful. And Dan uh, came in tonight. I felt really good about it. And when he goes back up there tomorrow, I'll feel really good about it also. It's just uh, they got us tonight. They got us. We just got to put it behind us and come back tomorrow. That's the that's the thing that I've noticed about the Rays. Is They're they, resilient. They really are, man. They they don't let losses get them down one bit. They come back the next, next night. And the one, they got like 13. They got to beat 13 to 5 against the Sox, Red Sox. And then they, boom, they come back and win the next next two. Yeah, I mean, they don't let losses get them down. I the Rays give them watched it all unravel tonight. <laughs> this team is still wondering how they lose a game after knocking out five homers. So the team is still two. By the way, did you see uh, Longoria had three yeah. Three shots just just himself. Yeah. What a stud. Spins away from sealing up a playoff spot. My wife and I are watching the ball game last night, and she officially announced Spice. If I was single, man, I would look him up. Now, I thought it was Pena. What happened to Pena? Nope, she's on the – She's a. You know, she didn't know nothing. Now she's a Longoria mark? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's like, oh, man, if I was single, man, I'd be looking him up. What'd you say to that? I don't – There, there. There, <laughs> I was watching the ball. Hey, hold on. Like, I'm like, first of all, I, 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 I'm, I'm surprised you guys. I'm surprised you remember that much of the conversation. I'm playing my. Hold on. I'm playing Madden on PS2 on my PSP. I'm on my PSP. I got. A, I, I just got my. I just got done drafting, Brent. I'm starting on my season three now. And and all I hear is you know. I'm like yeah, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at what happened because this game just evaporated in the ninth inning. Evan Longoria, his first home run since August 5th. Of course, two days later, he breaks his wrist, but it's 3-2 in the Rays. Now, still in the first, Deanna Navarro at the plate. That shot is gone. Baldelli scores 4-3 Rays. Now in the fourth, Carlos Payne. It's good seeing uh, Johnny Gomes, although he's not playing much. Johnny Gomes in the dugout. Love that guy. Love that guy. 
Yeah. This is his 15th home run after the All-Star break. Six to four Rays. They're up by two, but the Rays aren't done yet. Neither is Longoria. This is his second home run of the ball game. He's still not done. In the seventh, Longoria again becomes just the second player in team history to hit three home runs in one game. Johnny Gomes is the other. Eight to six, the score. But it all Johnny Gomes did it uh, against Kansas City in 05. I didn't realize Johnny been around that long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Play in the ninth. Dan Wheeler on the mound and Alexi Casilla. Home run. Game tied at eight. Now two on for a pinch hitter. Adam Everett. He's not bunting. Uh uh. He goes deep. Did you see that, Brent? Man, a fake bunt, then come up with a deep willy. That was a hell of, a hell of a hell of a deal. Hell of a play. In the corner. That's a problem. Now it's nine eight twins. They stretch it off by one. And the former Ray Delman Young singles ten to eight Minnesota Twins score five runs in the ninth inning and they win it eleven to eight. Jimmy quickly holiday hi Jimmy. Hey, I just want to say real quick, Palin sounds like she was trained by George Bush himself. Thank you, Jimmy. Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy waited an hour and three minutes on hold. An hour and three minutes on hold to say that. Jimmy, I, I think you're either the dumbest listener or the coolest and most loyal listener. Did you? Oh, here he is. Uh, here's this uh, Pat McGovern deal. I'm putting the city of St. Pete on notice, my friend. This is a hell of a cop. He's a good friend of mine, too, and he's a hell of a cop. And <clears throat> this guy in the paper now admitted that he thought it was pretty cool. A Boston fan <laughs> uh, arrested at the top is okay with it, but an officer might be in trouble. The guy said, hey, man, I was being belligerent. I, I, I told everybody that I was trying to get on the field. I hate to raise. <laughs> so now if this guy admits, I can see with this guy if he said, hey, listen, I wasn't going to the field. I was just a little bit intoxicated. But this guy says, I made the announcement. I'm going onto the field. <laughs> I mean, isn't that isn't that Pat's job to now, keep people from going on the field? By any force necessary? Yeah. This guy said he was tackled, police say, as he tried to jump onto the field. In the seventh inning, and doesn't and, and he doesn't deny that plan. <laughs> he said, "So what does he have to say for himself? He that he was tired of being hassled by security and the home crowd, and that he was striking back for the Red Sox nation, Red Sox nation for all the hatred from the Rays fans." He says it's pretty cool how the whole thing shut down. <clears throat> uh, well, the St. Petersburg Police Department says that the uh, office uh, that uh, with regards to, to the rules of tasering, our policy forbids an officer from either pointing or discharging a taser to someone's face, head, or neck, or groin area for obvious reasons. Officer Pat McGovern did not discharge the taser. The photo on page 3P in some editions of Thursday's Times shows his finger wasn't even on the trigger as he helped Officer uh, Willie Jen uh, Jennings make the arrest. In fact, police say uh, the bad guy uh, wouldn't stop. <clears throat> and here's, here's what uh, police and eyewitnesses say, that the guy, Christopher Shalinsky, wouldn't stop resisting or allow himself to be handcuffed until McGovern threatened to shock him with the taser. From that point forward, he then started cooperating. Well, yeah, isn't he resisting the arrest with force at that but the, point? But the officer's superiors are reviewing the incident. They're going to read McGovern's reports and ask him questions. And, and, and they're, they're, you know, they're going to try to make a big deal. By the way, it was the front page of the Boston Herald yesterday. You know, I'm sorry that you guys got, you came to Tampa, you got your ass kicked, and then you had somebody part of Red, Sox, Red Sox Nation that wanted to jump onto the field, man. I mean, by all force necessary, get the guy so he doesn't jump on the field. Let's see some drunken, belligerent Rays fan try to jump on the field at Fenway and see how the Boston cops treat him. Right. Let's see if they're how nice they are to him. Anyway, uh, later on that uh, on the ninth, this guy, the, the buddy, the buddy, this guy was sitting with, supposedly got arrested as well for being crazy. So now, if the guy admits that he was resisting, the guy admits that he proclaimed that he was running out to the field. The Sarinsky guy. What's what's the problem? I th I think that Pat and the security there and the the other officer, Officer Jenkins, did their job. Now, Spice later on. <clears throat> Uh, it has a four-part series of photos here. Photos one, two, three, and four. Right now, the uh, the photo yesterday showed you know the gun right to the back of the neck, right to the head. Yeah. But uh, 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 reports say that McGovern was moving it down at the time. And Brent, on photo four, it shows that it's actually uh, like on his shoulder. Uh, turn the lights up. <clears throat> look at uh, look at photo four there. It shows that it's now not. It's off the head and back between between the shoulder blades. Yep. 
So, <clears throat> I mean, obviously, Spice and still photography, you can isolate, you know, when the gun, where it started, you know, in, in the one brief millisecond. And uh -huh. then this one kind of shows where it was heading to and where it may have ended up. And I can tell you by the way Pat's finger mm -hmm. is right here, that's a common on the, when you're on the range, safety maneuver right. to keep your finger straight. Right. So you don't <clears throat> even accidentally fire it. Right. Even if the safety's on, you keep your fingers straight like I, I, that. I will have to tell you that McGovern looks pretty damn rugged there, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. I mean, out of all the cops in the picture, he looks like the most ruggedness. And you know what? If this guy <laughs> would have gotten on the field and injured somebody on the race, then they would have said, where was security? Where, where was where, the police? Where, where was Pat McGovern? He didn't pull out his taser. You know, by all, by, you know, let's say the guy got on the field and he tackled Hensky and he twisted H Hensky's knee. Because Hensky was the nearest person near it. Now, mind you, Hensky's a pretty damn big boy, and I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> right. But let's say that— Hensky might have kicked his oh, ass. Oh, yeah, man. Hensky might have said, you know what, cop? Put the taser away. I don't need any—let let this ass wipe through. <laughs> but let's just say that he blindsided Hensky. Hensky was warming up you know, with his head toward, you know, watching the ball, the game. This guy jumps over the fence, blindsides him, twists a knee— then, then what's gonna what's how much crap's uh, McGovern gonna be in? They're gonna be like, well, you should have used your taser, you should have used your pepper spray, you should have used your baton, you should have used any technique possible to keep this ass white from jumping the dugout. I'll give you an example. In 2003 <clears throat> in Kansas City, there was two guys that jumped the dugout and beat the crap out of the first base coach for uh, the uh, Kansas City Royals. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, I mean they no, beat that him was for down. The White Sox, wasn't it? Yeah, for the White Sox, a couple of drunks, a couple of drunks, right? Jump the, they jump the dugout, the same, the same kind of spot there. Now, now here's the deal. Here's the deal. Keep the lights on. I give Pat McGovern a timble, and 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 here's why. Wait till you hear my reasoning here. Stand by. And Pat McGovern, I'm just not saying this because he's a very good friend of mine, one of my best friends. I am also. I'll disclose the fact that the cop in question is a very good friend of mine. But I stick up for cops in general, uh, and so if this was any cop, I don't have a problem with any of this. I'm going to hand this over to you, and I want you to look at photos one, two, three. And they are struggling. This guy is resisting, <clears throat> and the one police officer, the black officer for the city of St. Petersburg, and the three other additional uh, blue-shirted security, trop security, they cannot get this guy in line. If you look at one, uh, they have, they have, he has two guys on him. Nothing's happening. Look at t uh, photo two. You now have three guys on him, including one uniformed black police officer, <clears throat> and they got him in a chokehold, and he still can't get him. And his arms are now in front of him. He can't. They cannot get him arrested. Uh, and three now. You have another. Uh, you have a black police officer and another. Uh, uh, you uh, trop security. And in three, he's now face down on the dugout, but not subdued and still fighting. You can tell that. And then t until Pat Pat McGovern is nowhere to be found until until uh, picture number four. And guess where the guy is finally being peaceful and not causing a problem when he's threatened with a taser. <clears throat> picture four. They finally have him handcuffed, and it looks like he's being compliant. After Pat McGovern stepped in and diffused the situation through good cop work and the and the threat, not the use of a taser. Now you know what I would think, Manson, that this would be an outcry of public a public outcry had the laser been discharged, yeah. and it hit somebody else, or it was kind of a brutal thing and the kids had to see it. I, I can maybe and maybe hit him in the head, but none of those three things happened. Nope. There's no bubbles, no troubles. Yeah, the bad exactly. guy, the bad guy, is officially cuffed and hauled away from the game, and no, nothing was discharged. Nobody was hurt, and the guy didn't get on the field. What was the problem? I don't see one at all. And on top of it all, police work and security work require split second decision. It's making. the letter of the law and the spirit of the law, my right. friend. And and this is definitely in the spirit of the law. Now, had Pat discharged it. On his head, that's a problem. That didn't happen. Had Pat discharged it and it wasn't didn't need to be discharged and it took the guy down and he flopped like a fish and maybe hit his head on the concrete and some kids had to see it, that could be a problem. That didn't happen. Had Pat discharged it and it didn't hit the target and, uh, and it went and hit somebody else, that could be a problem. None of that happened. In fact, I admire how close Pat had it to his head because there was no room for error there had he, <laughs> had, he had to discharge it. <laughs> Bitch, that ain't going nowhere but in your skull, kid. <laughs> now, I'm going to hand these pictures over to you, and I want you to look at pictures one, two, three, and then and, and you can see that they're struggling. It's a, and I want, you to, I want you to hand it out throughout the room. I want everybody's comments. And then I want you to look when my boy, the, the governor, comes in, Pat McGovern, 
and it, boy, no bubbles, no troubles. That I think that the, that the taser, the threat of the taser, regardless of where you put it, did its job, and this is great police work. I want you to look at the pictures, yeah. and then I want you to hand it to Spice. Actually, mansion. I saw them. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Brent, look at the pictures. Okay, you, tell, you tell, at, tell me what you see in one, two, and three. Okay, I'm looking at one. You've got two security guards hanging off of this guy. Okay, right. all right. And this guy's pretty thick. Yeah, I mean, this is not a small guy. No, this is a pretty thick guy. Of course, he's not thicker than Pat McGovern. And you know, Pat security McGovern guards is a bonafide stud. But you know, security guards have to watch what they do too. Right. Right. You know, even even more than a cop sometimes because they don't have the authority right. to do what a cop they can don't, do. They're not. They're not vested, and they're not. They're, they don't have other arrest powers. So then, uh, on two, I see the guy with the, the security guard. You can see he's the supervisor because he's got the headset on. Right. He comes up on top of the dugout and puts his arm across the guy's face. Right. So he's still and, and, going crazy. Right. And the guy's still going crazy. Like in a, the guy's get, almost getting choke out, choked out. And the guy's still going crazy. And then in three, I see Officer Jenkins and two security guards still trying to subdue this guy. And he still won't give up. Right. Still, you can see that his, his veins are popping out of his head and stuff. And then you see four. And it's just totally bliss and peaceful because <laughs> Pat McGovern comes in and says, listen, dirt bag with a taser pointed initially or a started, you know, maybe started towards the head area and then down towards the shoulder area. If you make another move, you stupid SOB, I'm going to taser you, my friend. Period. End of end of end of problem. Yeah, that's that, the guy's that, now officially subdued, the guy is now compliant, and the guy now gets to go to the Jim Coates hotel. Exactly. That's exactly right. That's exactly Hand it over what to Man- Manson's not seen it. Hand it over to Manson. Like him. You know, this is a Manson's not responsible. He doesn't want anybody screwed with by the cops by, uh, any more than the next guy. He's not going to sit here and stick up for the cops unless it's right. But for but for me, I I, I just cannot second guess split second trained police officers and split second decision making. So, so Matthew, you can see one. Yeah, I mean, you got you the got, guy's a problem. You got two guys on him. He's right. a problem. Look and at you two, got three guys on, three <laughs> guys on him. The guy's going crazy. And he's in two. going crazy in Pat, two. And by the way, in one, two, and three, Pat McGovern's nowhere to be found. Yep. Obviously, he's making his way there. Then three, you see the guy sees all his veins are coming out of his oh, head. Yeah, you can tell. And then four, well, looks like it's everything settling down. <laughs> yeah. And what's the the only difference between one, two, and three, and then four is what? Is a uh, Pat McGovern. <laughs> Pat McGovern. <laughs> I think you know that was probably an attention attention getter. The only way that guy would even know that there, there was a taser involved was to feel that. Is to put <laughs> it on your grape. Yeah, and say this is what I got, buddy. And he did obviously didn't discharge it. I don't see a problem. No, 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 no problem at all. Pat McGovern yet yet another temple, a two timer kit. <laughs> Alan from Tampa. Hi, Alan. Hey, Bubba. On uh, Bay News 9 this morning, they had that gentleman. Uh, he was released from jail. He got a day in jail, and he was quite happy that he got a day in jail, and he was outside the courthouse holding his uh, oh, yeah, I mean, in the, arrest in record the, in his hand. In the newspaper today, the guy's like, hey, man, I, you know, yeah, I was going to. I proclaimed my. I told the people to my section that you know, screw the the Rays, they suck. I uh, Boston Red Sox nation. I'm making my way to the field, and uh, he, you know, the guy in the newspaper admitted that. So I mean, by any he said the same thing. I'm sorry, Bubba. No, go ahead. By any means necessary to take this guy down. On, he said the same thing on Bay News Nine this morning. He said I jumped down. I was going to high five all the Red Sox fans, and I was going to run around the field until somebody tackled me. Yeah. Why is this officer in trouble? If this if this officer this moron jumped the fence and got some you know around players and people, nobody knows what he's up to. Well, and, the the, uh, the final the officer the, now who's trying to do his job is in trouble. Why this guy's making a mockery? The of uh, it. the final outcome and the final resting spot was on top of the raised dugout. I mean, you can't get any. The guy's within three feet of being you know near uh, highly paid and very protected uh, ball players. And, and and the guy made you know made the announcement. I'm going down there. Uh, you know, it's the continually pussification of America and and police agencies. And you know, Jim Coates wouldn't allow this. I promise you that. No way. Wow. David well, Jones. Right out. Of Rick Baker. That's the problem. You got some some stupid big nose, beady eyed little ass wipe named Rick Baker. What a dick. He better do. He better do the right thing, man. You better do the right thing, Rick Baker. I'll start my whole big thing about you. Remember about the military parts and the scrap metal and his father and one of his somebody went to prison and all this. I'll start it all. Yeah, uh, because uh, <clears throat> Manson, I'm just ahead. I'm just glad this guy was white. Yeah, because otherwise, imagine the big brouhaha that would be now. 
Yeah, you're right. St. Pete. It would just be yeah, you're right. unbelievable. Well, you know what? Us whites will riot. I'll start a new I'll start a Baruhu. <laughs> Instead of Yeruhu, it'll be Bubba Yeru Baruhu. I gotta give the both brothers credit. I've never really seen a brother run onto the field. <laughs> no, man. Man, brothers don't they don't need that time for that, man. This is how they think, man, I paid eighty bucks for this ticket, bitch. I ain't going to jail. Man, last time I was in jail, man, Jim Coates Hotel, that ain't no fun, dog. <laughs> man. I, I like to drink my Miller Lite, eat my peanuts, watch this ball game, man. You know, I ain't trying to play that crap. I give a crap who wins or loses, man. Them, I can run as fast as that guy. I can steal that base. Man, I had a 418 average in Glitter League, kid. Man, you don't see no brothers making that. And, and hell no, man. You see white trash running out there like a bunch of dicks. All the time. <clears throat> probably because somebody gave them a ticket at work. Guy's probably like a lawn maintenance kind of guy. One of his clients couldn't make it a ball game. You know, affluent people who paid for their tickets and value their experience don't, don't do things like that, right? No, oh, absolutely not. Remember the Monday night game between the ba- Packers and the Bucks, and that guy ran onto the field, and uh, I remember the guy's name. He was a state trooper, Higarita. Tackle. Oh. He laid him out like a football player. If I was Tony Lynch, I would have said, man, you know what? You're a, John you're on Lynch, special teams. John Lynch, you're fired. Whatever Higarita, Higarita, you're fired. Suit it up, kid. <laughs> oh, Brian. Hi, Brian. Hey, what's happening, Bubba? Yeah, we were at the game the other night when that dude got stuffed, and uh, then we seen him get thrown in the cop car. He, full time, he's yelling "Red Sox Nation," you know, getting off. The guy got what he was, the guy got what he deserved, man. I tell you that right now. I'll tell you right now, Rick Baker. If you don't make the right decision, I don't care if it's Pat McGovern, who's a friend of mine, or it's some one of your officers that I don't know, man. I would, I would have the same stance on this. And you know what? In, in fact, it's not bad cop work; it's great cop work. And uh, I'm putting you on notice, Baker, you big nose, beady eyed little Ichabod crane looking little bitch. I might even get into the get into the building department, Brandon, how they discriminate against me when I try to do a room home. You know about that. And oh my god! And they're they bragging, saying, "Yeah, he always gets his way." Well, I wasn't on the radio back then; I was on satellite. He goes, and he's not on the radio anymore. So screw that fat ass. I'm not even getting into all that. I can't wait till we get a new mayor. Me too. <laughs> Yeah. This is the Bubba Radio Network. Make sure you subscribe to Bubba Army HQ. Otherwise, Bubba will have to take action. And there's a lot of power behind those short arms. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Now back to the BRN. I don't have a problem with Pauly. I know he probably is getting paid on, you know, how many people show up. Yeah, I mean, he wants, you know, obviously you want people to go to the show. So, and Pauly's a good dude. And he'll be on the Cowhead show later today on the uh, right here on the Bone. So, Cowhead has always has a great show, and he always does real well with comedians. And uh, Pauly will be on, you know, I think Pauly and uh, Cowhead have a history, so they'll have a, they'll have a great, great, great segment or two. So, listen to uh, Cowhead this afternoon and listen to Pauly. I'm just trying to make a stance uh, against this little Gary asswipe. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, uh, this not only did this guy uh, it, it has nothing to do with him botching up tickets for a friend of mine, but uh, we are uh, ready to have Paulie on today, and then we get uh, word that uh, that Paulie's on MJ. Which, and, and, and if you know anything about uh, radio, you know when you are like Cowhead and myself, and you're number one rated, you don't share guests. You know the you don't give people the luxury to being able to go to Clear Channel and Cox. Yeah, there's there's something called marketplace loyalty, and and we right. and we hold that regard very high, especially with a business like the Improv, because and, and we don't have a problem with you doing Fisher and Boy, right? And we don't have a problem with you doing That's right, the, Fish. <laughs> what's that? That's right, Fish. Uh, you know, but keep it. You know, you, you're not going to be able to 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 wander around Clear Channel and and go to do all those shows. And subsequently then come over here and Cox. You're just not going to pick, you know, strategically pick which one fits the best. And big shows do that. Suck-ass shows will take anybody that they can because they need content. I could take this show literally till noon today. I got so much stuff. But, uh, and I wanted to have Polly on and was going to have him on until I found out that uh, the, uh, the promoter, Gary, had taken him over to do MJ show. So uh, I don't have any toddler. It has nothing to do with. It. Well, it, I guess it kind of does. I hate MJ. Well, kind of does, yeah, because uh, you know one, <clears throat> our one of our rules here is hey, <clears throat> don't do our show if you're going to do his show. And the other That's thing, it. and the other thing is real simple. We have been so uh, loyal to this Gary guy. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, the- <laughs> meanwhile, MJ has banned uh, anybody from. Th- from the improv coming on his show, and it's been a long-standing ban for like five years from him. So, but because you know, it's Paulie it goes Shore, both ways. 
uh, you know, MJ uh, lifts his ban and allows Paul. So, anyway, make a long story short, I, I elected not to have Paulie on today. And I'm not telling Cowhead what to do. Cowhead may do the same. He may not. And Cowhead will probably end up having him on. It'll be a great interview. But uh, Pauly is at the uh, Improv this weekend. If you're a big Pauly Shore fan, you want to go see some good comedy. He's a very funny man, a very good friend. There be it. Quickly, a 23-second soundbite uh, from, I think, Channel 10. The trial date is set now officially for that uh, Lisa Marinelli girl, the uh, Pasco County teacher that's actually pretty damn steamy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one with the big, uh, like the nice DSLs. Yeah, big DSLs. Yeah. And she was texting saying, hey, man, we can get a quickie in at 1 o'clock. And <laughs> if you're a real man, bring your A game. Spice, I may start sending, I may send a bubble correspondence to uh, uh, Brent. Track down through Kevin uh, the information as to where that trial is going to be and the dates. I may send a correspondent, okay? Okay. A Pasco judge has set a trial date for a teacher accused of having sex with a student. Detectives say 41-year-old Lisa Marinelli had sex with a 17-year-old boy about 10 times. Officers say that the teen's father started asking questions when he caught his son getting out of Marinelli's car, pulling up his pants. Her trial starts December 1st. Thanks, Dad. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Dad. Uh, We're talking about a 17-year-old boy here. Way to see block on your son, Dad. Yeah, and not only that, but Prince right, man. You're not talking about a third. Hey, again, you know, it's not right. Any way you you slice it, it's not right. Come on, but every single one of us in this room was getting after it at 17. Even Manson, when he was 17, the most conservative guy in the the show that's disgusted by all this, as we are, at 17, Manson, if you would have had, you know, know, obviously you're not with your wife, you know, and you're 17, if if you would have had a hot, hot, dream come true. True. Yeah, hot thirty-nine year old, t- hot by by your standards or by seventeen year old standards. A seventeen, uh, a hot teacher wanting to get after it at seventeen. That's a party for you. It is. You know and what? if your dad would have messed it up on the deal, <laughs> oh. I mean, you'd be like, "Thanks, Dad. I don't get that much ass anyway because I'm seventeen. <laughs> I got this hot older milf that's just really breaking me in right." Thanks for ruining my party there, Pops. Appreciate it, Dad. You're making me look stupid. Uh. And meanwhile, when I was 17, that's when I signed my name on the dotted line to, to go, go fight for our country. To go to the Marine Corps, yeah. Secondly, Spice, we have a good friend. Is it Dave Harb over there at the... Um, Live Nation? Yeah. Yeah, Dave Harb. Over there at the uh, Ford Amphitheater. Mm-hmm. Good, good guy, Really man. good dude. Nice facility, man. If you've never seen a show at the Ford Amp, you need to go check it out, man. Great. Easy in and out parking right off of I-4. Why, well, I guess now... You know, for years they had a problem with uh, how they measured the sound, and they made these they made the Ford Amphitheater, you know, jump through all these hoops. They had to reconfigure the deal. They had to spend like five or eight million dollars, which which is fine. I mean, you know, hey, they got the situation rectified. It's a great place to go see a a concert, uh, especially towards some of the cooler months. Well, I guess now they have a new measuring the way they measure sound, and it's actually going to help the Ford Amphitheater. It's it's actually the way they measure sound with this new technique now actually helps the Ford Amphitheater. For years, we've been seeing, you know, how much the bad guys they are. But I guess from the changes that they've made and the way that they got this new metering or measuring device, it actually is pro Ford Amphitheater, which I find refreshing because these poor guys have been run through the mug, have they not? Uh, big time, man. Corn. I mean, I went and saw a corn show, and they made corn turn down the music so low, it, it really sounded like crap. Well, you know, the bad thing about it is, man, rather than for us to be appreciative but that the, that they come in and and Ford you know sponsors it and they do this huge venue. You build the, a kick-ass. Ve- I mean, it's a really kick-ass venue. And the knock on Tampa for years is you know we don't we didn't get some of the summer, uh, the Aerosmiths and some of the big deals because Ozfest, Ozfest because we didn't have a, an outdoor amphitheater type deal. We were one of the largest cities in America. You know, Indianapolis had one. Milwaukee towns that are much smaller than us. We finally get one and then leave it to us and the old people. To damn near close it down and run them out of town. My ears hurt. So this is a... A step in the wrong direction for people who live near the Ford Amphitheater. They've been fighting... Get over it. <clears throat> the, uh, ...the loud music there for a long time since the place opened, in fact. And today, the Hillsboro Environmental Protection Commission made it easier for concerts to get even louder. They changed the way they measure noise coming from loud night spots. Noise violations used to be issued if the sound spiked over the decibel limit. Now, decibel violations will be averaged over a 10-minute time period nice now how bad was i discriminated against and messed with in hernando county oh. to the tune of you know hundreds of thousands of dollars that i lost when i had planted bubba up there because i had a sheriff at the time that did not like me and the and the head of the county commission that did not like me and and, and my sound violations brent I, w- I wasn't even i was within 10 i was 10 points under but they fined me 500 dollars a day anytime they would take a sound meter out uh, and, and a truck would go by and, and make the meter spike. Yeah, and you were running a legal, legitimate business. Yeah, and night, they were screwing night, with you. Nightclub. 
Planet, Pay, Planet Bubba. Paying taxes in their county, by the way. Spice, I hate to do it to the people, Bam, but I got to get caught up. And I got uh, the Tidwell stuff next and the uh, Polly Shore Spice confrontation in the parking lot next as well. So let me get those. This, let me get this out of the way so I can get those two done fired because we got a hard out today. You don't have a choice. Wow. You're just gonna have to follow. Have to follow. Have to follow. A little breather will help you get ready for the next oral onslaught. Do something smart. This is the Bubba Radio Network. Do you want to hear all the times Hulk Hogan or Tucker Carlson called in? We have it all for you on BubbaArmyHQ.com. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Prosecutors outside the uh, Anthony home uh, uh, caused Casey to call 911. So, uh, I'm sorry, protesters outside the uh, Anthony, the uh, the Casey Anthony mom as dads now just every day going out and screwing with these protesters. And they almost got to fisticuffs yesterday. No charges filed for Representative Mark Foley, so you can basically email and page and uh, and I am really really nasty messages to underage uh, uh, interns and pages, yeah, and be and that's okay. that's not a problem. Uh, much love to all the federal marshals and uh, David G and uh, Jim Coates and 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 the likes of. Uh, Grady Judge for Operation Orange Crush. They got 2,500 felony wanted fugitives in the area in this big roundup. Thank you so much. Great job. Uh, and uh, I, I'm not going to be able to get in uh, to the uh, – uh, to uh, well, that's that's the stuff I wanted to get into. What I am going to be able to get to is a 20 – I'm sorry, uh, 25 cent. Come to the studio here momentarily. Uh, Mike Tidwell, I'm going to be calling you. Hopefully you're listening. I'm going to get into the uh, Bubba name game uh, that, that happened at uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. Here in a second. I hope that Tidwell, my buddy Mike Tidwell, very, very good friend of mine, is honest. Because 25, you will uh, put your headphones on. You will Mm -hmm. uh, confirm that you do know the whole story, correct? From what's been told you. Yeah. What the the general manager told me in uh, the server. In the server. Yep. I'll I'll get to that. Can you you enunciate a little bit better, please? (laughs) Server. Thank you. In the server. What the general manager told me in the server. I mean, you know, you want to go work for Orlando? You want to go work for Wild? What's going on? No, that's just how I talk, man. I'm not trying to be, you know, I'm not trying to be that. It's... You're not trying to be nothing but yourself, right? Yeah. Here's the confrontation that Spice just had about an hour, and no, about two hours ago with Polly Shore and uh, his handler in the parking lot when we told. Well, you know, I told him, <laughs> we were texting back and forth, and then he called me, and I said, hey, we're canceling it, not happening, don't show up. And he goes, okay. Well, then, sure enough, they show up. Right. This is in the parking lot, by the way. This is in the parking lot here a couple hours ago. Spice hulked up. There it is. What's up, man? How you doing, buddy? Hey, it's nothing personal against you, but Gary, what the f***, bro? Listen, we, I was on 970 talking to him. He went down the hallway. Let me, let me first and f- Gary, Gary you, know, you know why? Only f- rule. The only rule I have with I you. The I, only one. I and I'm taking heat from it. Listen, you know I hate him. I set him up on the intern but thing. I haven't had anybody on. He's walking down the hallway. They f- him. He's Jerry, I him. love Jerry. Bubba, dude. I, I came here to. <laughs> <laughs> Polly. Polly. Uh, I love Bubba. This is, this is actually funnier than any interview we can do. <laughs> Polly, we love you. It's, it's nothing personal well, against you. Don't brother. take it out on me, bro. It just, I didn't even know he was there. But it's I, nothing against you, Gary. Polly, trust me, it's nothing against you. But if we I as a show, anything, we as a show that. have to take a stand on this Bubba, because I love of the fact you, bro. that this is the way it is. <laughs> he's not, now now he's, he's talking to the camera. He's talking to the camera. Love you, bro. I, hey, Polly, I love you too, buddy. That's why I hope you have a ton of people that show up at your. Uh, at your at the improv this weekend to see you. It's Gary. And I've told you numerous times. We've never been on there with anyone in five years. I banned. He won't even let me walk what? by his place. Paulie's walking down the hallway. I'm so so like- let me get so, so the bottom line is MJ's a real dick. He bans anybody from the improv coming, but as soon as you see Polly Shore, because he's a groupie and a mark he and a, hmm. and a mark, he whisks him the way quick, uh, quickly into the room. Behind Gary's back. Well Gary, I'm sorry. You should keep better better you know better dibs is where your talent is. Straight. So he's he has banned you guys, okay, right? Yeah, but he likes Paul. He Paul. Well, hang on, yeah. hang on. Well, he likes any A, B, C, D, or E lister. So MJ bans you guys. Yeah. Yet you let him drag him in the studio. There. No, I'm on 970. I'm sitting there talking with Jeff Fisher, and he goes down the hallway. Faster <laughs> grabs. I don't know why this thing's skipping. Let me wa- let me wipe it down real fast. I don't know if it's got something on it or something. No, it doesn't have anything on it. Let me go to a minute. It's a so minute. he's glad handing with the board off. <clears throat> 
Yeah. Well, I'll probably show his yeah. wander in the building. Exactly. He's <laughs> glad handing with the board <laughs> up. <laughs> not, not, not even hanging <laughs> out <laughs> with Jack and Ted, the cool guys. What's up, Polly? <laughs> I'm just going to go on. <laughs> MJ bans you guys, yeah. yet you let him drag him in the there. studio. No, I'm on 970. I'm sitting there talking with Jeff Fisher. And he yeah, the board op. Goes down the hallway. As a show. Which, by the way, that Jeff Fisher guy really turned on us after we were fired. Did you hear some of the things he said about us? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you have to take a stand. Not too many did, man. A lot of people, a lot of good people over there. Lot, Jack and Ted, uh, Sue Trikas, Gabe Hobbs, a lot of good people over there. Ton. Let's, and, let's, and let's, and dis, is, let's, let's dis MJ on the air. <clears throat> no, 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 no. Perfect. It's controversy. <laughs> it's fun. Perfect. It doesn't work Perfect. like that, Gary. <laughs> Gary, I've talked to you numerous times about this, brother, and I fought, I, believe me, I fought for you. I, I, I fought for the improv. Bro. We've never asked for anything, and that whole situation got screwed up. We, we've, we've done nothing but be good to you, and this is what happened. Spicy. And I can't do anything about it. It's beyond my control. And the fact that I told you over the phone, and then you show up here, is even worse. Because now Bubba's really upset because they're like, well, didn't you talk to him? I said, yes, yeah, I told him not to come see, here. The thing is, I didn't. I told him to bring me here because I never, you know what I mean? I have a relationship with him. I, and I, I didn't agree, Paulie. So. And, and we love some level. Yeah. But on a business level, I can't allow this to happen. And, Bu- and Bubba. Spice, good work, man. You're a good, bad guy. And those are the breaks. It's not even allowed to happen. All right, bro. All right. Paulie, thank you. I appreciate it. I mean, we'll it, it would be good radio to have me on anyway. <laughs> it's, it's nothing personal against you, Polly. Uh, all right. <laughs> Polly, it'd be good radio. <laughs> all right, over, over to you. Now, I have video surveillance of uh, Tidwell, a buddy of mine, a really good friend of mine. Uh, and from so uh, 25, I'm going to the uh, to Buffalo Wild Wings a few nights ago with a whole bunch of people. I got the actual bill, the printed up bill, which there were a bunch of things that comped. And then I got video surveillance of uh, of Mike and his group arriving. I got a video surveillance of him uh, talking to the waitress, and then goes outside and with a couple of guys, and then they go uh, uh, to with a with a group onto the patio, and then uh, yeah. And essentially, what happened was it, it, this guy rolls in there, which Buffalo well, Wild Wings, a very good client of ours, very good friends of ours. The general manager called us yesterday and told us this story. Go ahead, Spike. Yeah, and uh, so so this gentleman rolls in there and claims to be you, saying he's Bubba the Love Sponge and. Uh, you know, because they cut him off because he had too, too many Crown and Cokes. He was acting disorderly. Well, he didn't say he was Bubba until, from what I can gather, until they cut him off. They cut him off and, don't you know who I am? I'm Bubba the Love Sponge. And it turns out uh, they, they check on the website, realize it's not you, realize that it's another gentleman in the picture of on uh, TylerClem.com, which turns out to be your buddy Mike. Right, who helps me with Tyler's race team. Right. And helps me with my late model team. I mean, he's a great racer. I love the guy. I don't want to not be his friend. Uh, but i got to get to the bottom of this, and i got to have the truth. And I hope that Tidwell's listening. The truth will set you free. I don't have any tolerance for this. He said, I don't have the time either. For somebody to go around town and impersonate any of us, I mean, come on. If he did it, though, man, and he was, and he was drunk off his ass like he was on five double Crown and Cokes and said, yeah, you know, Bob, I may have done You know what? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I can, I can completely get over that. But if you're going to sit here and deny and deny and deny, I ain't got nothing for you. So, 25, you went there like yesterday. You, got the, you picked up the video set for surveillance for me. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, and you spoke to the server, and you spoke to the, the manager, GM. the GM, yep. and, and tell me what they said to you. Well, when I when I walked in and uh, I was talking to the GM, he was telling me the whole story of his manager on duty, who actually talked to Mike the night before, had freaked out because um, you know they they the server that was serving Mike had um, cut him off of drinks because he was too drunk, and support from what the server was telling me that. <coughs> He kept ask he he asked her three times you know do you know who I am you know do you know who I am and she asked him three times you know, like well who are you because she's never heard the show right and um, you know she doesn't really she she knows that we're a client and she knows that the you know she knows the bone is a client and stuff but she's never listened to the show so she doesn't know what you look like right and um, he he just kept saying it and then she went to the manager who I think his name is uh, Lewis. And, and said, man, who, who, who is this guy? Am I supposed to be knowing who this guy is? Because this guy keeps asking me, do I know who he is? Yeah, and then, and then he started freaking out because um, I guess... I guess and the guy had a... Bu- and Mike, Mike had a Bubba shirt on, right? Yeah, he had on, a, he had on a, the Dickie shirt. Right. And <clears throat> I guess when they went out on the patio was when apparently Mike told them that, you know, Bubba's a client, you know, you know I'm, I'm, I'm a client and, you know, we can fix this. I won't bash you on the air. You know, we won't talk about it on the radio. But but then, you know, he what the GM told me last night was that, you know, Mike didn't ask for anything free. 
Uh, everything that's comped in that bill was comped because supposedly it was a problem with the, you know, a, a problem in the kitchen, supposedly. All right, that's fine. So, and, I, and I'm sure he didn't ask for anything for free, but I have yeah. a problem with him if indeed he did say, do you know who I am? But then, you know, as I was heading down there, because I, I had to, uh, I was texting the GM to make sure we had right. everything right to right. get the video. He was texting me and he told me that Mike stopped in earlier yesterday and was apologizing and, you know, he said he was sorry for... You know, if he caused any trouble, well, Mike alluded, out why you were. Mike alluded to the fact on, on, on the, my text yesterday, I did not speak to him, I'm so mad at him, that, I, that it didn't go down like that. Well, he, the, he, look, he was just looking for his 11th double shot of crown. I mean, what's the big deal? <laughs> and speaking of Buffalo Wild Wings, I will be there tomorrow. It's a great place to watch college football. U.S. 19 North and Clearwater, 4-6 to six for the Florida-Tennessee game. And I got two pair of Gator tickets to give away, one pair for the Ole Miss game and one pair for the Kentucky game. And those are hard tickets to come by. So and Brent and, will be. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Twenty five. No, I was just you know. Hey. And hold on. Hold on, Mike. Go ahead. Twenty five. And the GM just kept. He kept stressing the fact that you know he wasn't asking anything free. He apologized. He didn't want you know you to feel like he was in there looking for free stuff. But no, I don't think it, Mike. So tell me the story and be honest, Mike. Uh, first of all, Mike, I love you to death. I'll do anything for you. And if you messed up, then just say it, and and, and we'll move on. It's not a big deal. All right. Um. You know. I'm still telling you, and I'm not going to lie to you, that I don't remember them telling me or me telling them that I'm Bubba. No, they now, didn't. They, 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 no, they wait didn't. A minute, those, uh, no, hold on, hold on. They didn't say that you said that. They said that you said, do you know who I am? And <clears throat> I don't remember mentioning that, but I'm at, somebody at the table did say that. And I'm still trying to get to the bottom of who said that. I did not say that. You mean, now, so, when so, we no, went outside. Now, now hold on. Right? So you're trying to say that maybe. Maybe you didn't say that, but one of your hanger on or friends may have told, may have tried to allude to the server that you were Bubba. Maybe not. Right. Maybe behind right. your back. Right. And see, and then whenever whenever the server first come up and cut us off, and and Jay and the and the and the manager and everybody, I tell you that none of us were junk, none of us were belligerent, none of us were out of hand. But it's st- just we had too much alcohol <laughs> within the amount of time frame that we ordered it. I understand that, but that's yeah, called I mean, responsible serving. I mean, so at that at that point, no, no, I understand. But whenever she come out and cut us off. Oh, she said that we were just cutting you off. So I just asked for the manager to find out why we were getting cut off. Now, Mike, I love you to death, but five double double crowns, I mean, at, at the end of the day, I mean, how much more do you need? Yeah, and you're, you're getting cut off because every every restaurant has to have responsible uh, serving, uh, responsible server training. So when you have that many liquor drinks in that amount of time and they have to assume that you're driving, they have to take responsibility for it. So, no, and wait a minute, though. In, in the same sense, I understand that totally. And and but they didn't tell me that until after I asked for the manager to come and talk to me, and that's when we went outside. And that's whenever we went outside. And the manager, I told Jay this yesterday. I went down and talked to Jay for an hour yesterday, and and he was fine. We shook hands. Everything's great. We even talked about he's wanting a, a swimming pool being built. But Mike, but I can but, care I can care less. <laughs> you and you and Jay are friends. I'm talking about what talking about my reputation, and I got people that are hanging out with you now, being a bunch of smart asses trying to tell people that you're Bubba, and that comes back to me. And at the end of the day, it was a little bit of a problem because they're a client. So then I get cocks mad at me that I got people that hang out with me now that are doing bullcrap stuff like this. And I know, and that's why I'm I am personally very upset about it, and I am still trying to find out who at the table said this. Well, I mean, you you don't know who was all. I mean, how many people are you hanging out with? It'd be quickly you could quickly determine. You know, there's one of seven or eight or nine or four or two people. It's a big mystery. I mean, we, we had like I mean, Columbo would have had this solved there. already long you had, ago. You had one now. <laughs> we had twelve people there, and you, and you, and I got to deal with the same thing you do. with. nobody wants to confess up to nothing. You know, well, you gonna, it looks bad on me. It's like I texted you just a couple seconds ago. No matter how this comes out, it's going to look bad on me. Because, and I and I honestly, the next day, he's got quite you know, an entourage. I didn't. He's I Bubba. Didn't, he's Bubba Light. Twelve Go ahead. people. Jesus. I didn't feel that this was any situation because whenever the manager explained it to me, I said, "Fine." We went in, we paid the bill, and we left. And then yesterday, I still got my original bill, and I pulled it out the next morning and seen there's a lot of manager stuff on there. And I went to Jay and asked Jay about that, and he says, no, it was because of messed up food. I'm it not, wasn't, Mike, it I'm wasn't. not mad about the messed up food or any comps on your bill. I'm mad that the I, server... I know you're mad because somebody the, said that I'm Bubba. Yeah. And, and I was and, like, I mean, come, I was like, come on, man. And that's what I told Jay, too. I said, how stupid would that be for me, to, uh, that, knowing that they're a client, for me to go in there and say that I'm Bubba? 
I mean, it, wouldn't that be? I mean, that's just. Well, I hope I hope that you get to the bottom of of who on your entourage said this because that's bull, man. That is so it is not. Bull. That's you know. I mean, it makes you look bad. It makes me look bad with my company. It puts a good client of mine in an uncomfortable spot. You know, all to be all to be a smart ass. And at the end of the day, the person that gets screwed with the most is you. Because I, I mean, know. I'm 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 yes, I'm a little bit okay now. I understand your explanation, but yesterday, Mike, I was I was over you. Oh, I'm, I know. I'm, and I, you know, if I was in your position, I'd be the same way. I'd be really pissed off too. But, uh, and that's why I was trying to get. That, that's why I went and talked to Jay yesterday without you even asking me to or anything else because I wanted to get down to the bottom of it because maybe the server or somebody could tell me. Because you don't remember because you had ten shots is, of whiskey in two thing. hours. Well, no, you want you want, and the re, and the reason why you don't, I, 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 I'm not <laughs> mad at you, but the reason why you don't remember is because you you were drunk off your ass. But this is another thing, too. I just <laughs> talked to my cousin that was sitting with us, and he said, you know what? Her, his son's name is Bubba. And and his wife looked at him and said, hey, where's Bubba? Well, I mean, what? I mean, now, we're, now we're getting Oh, down. man. No, it's getting no, more b- unbelievable right, by a I'm second. Not to, I'm not trying to make mis- you know, excuses. All right. I don't have, I don't I have will, to be I honest will. with you. I don't feel that I have anything to make an excuse about because I, I didn't say it, you know? All right, buddy. I hear the hillbilly. The 9-11 yeah, yeah. story is more believable uh, than this. I'll call you later, okay? All right. Bye, Mike the Tree Man. <laughs> <laughs>